This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The New York Yankees faced the Seattle Mariners at the Kingdom for a Thursday night game on May 6th, 1982. New York was managed by Gene Michael and were coming off a World Series loss to the Dodgers in 1981. Yankees owner George Steinbrenner had been playing musical chairs with Bob Lemon and Gene Michael as manager in 1981 and 82, hiring, firing, or demoting each of them on two different occasions. The Yankees also entered 1982 without Reggie Jackson, who had left for the Angels during free agency, signing a contract that doubled his income and now earning him over $1 million a year. Seattle had never finished higher than 6th or 7th place in the AL West during the franchise's five years in existence, but were hoping they could turn the team around by saying goodbye to veterans Jeff Burroughs and Tom Pachorek, along with the hiring of new manager Renee Lackman. This audio recording is from the New York Radio Broadcast, featuring announcers Frank Messer and Bill White. Okay, umpires and managers and all play discussing the ground rules, exchanging the last cards. Here are the lineups for you for the Yankees. Coming in 9 and 13, they've got their last two. Leading off playing in second, Willie Randolph. Batting second, playing in right, Ken Griffey. Batting third, playing in center, Jerry Mumphrey. Batting fourth, the newest of the new Yankees, first baseman, John Mayberry. Batting in the number five spot and playing in left field, Dave Winfield. Batting sixth, uh, the designated hitter, Oscar Gamble. Batting seventh, the Yankees third baseman, Roy Smalley. Batting eighth and catching Rick Sarone. And batting ninth and playing shortstop will be Bucky Dent. Yankee pitcher tonight, no wins and no loss. His third start, Doyle Alexander. Now for the Seattle Mariners. 12 and 15 on the year, presently in fifth place in the American League West. Leading off playing at second, Julio Cruz. Batting second and playing at third, Manny Castillo. Batting uh, third and playing at left, Bruce Foxy. Batting fourth is the designated hitter, Ricky Zip. Batting fifth, the shortstop, Todd Cruz. Batting sixth and playing in right field, Al Cowan. Batting seventh, the center fielder, Joe Simpson. Batting eighth and playing at first, Jim Naylor. And batting ninth and playing at the catcher will be Terry Boyd. And ladies and gentlemen, this crowd here of perhaps some 30,000, uh, much more than they expected before. They knew Gaylord Perry would be seeking that coveted 300th win and ready in anticipation of the Seattle Mariners right-hander Gaylord Perry being a history-making figure here tonight. Our umpiring crew, Ken Kaiser, will be the plate umpire. Jerry Newdecker at first base, Bill Hammer at second base, and George Maloney at third. So we'll have the opening pitch of tonight's game with the Mariners and the Yankees right after this. Hello there, adventurers of Radio Land. You can call me Major. I'm paying a visit to someone's backyard right now. The person who lives here leaves his lake and all his yard tools lying around day and night. He practically invited me to make trouble. I can cause his tools to search him. It doesn't take much. Just one call step and... Ow! I don't know hit me in the face. <laughs> Better put these away. Another time, another Maybe you are. Brought to you by the Allstate Network. It's Reborn Radio Theater. Low budget recreation of old time radio, proving nostalgia isn't what it used to be. Today, the answer guy. He'll answer any question you have. Well, I'm told thanks to that kid. Wait till I ask the question, sir. Oh, a man for Eureka queries, can you weigh yourself on the Richter scale? Absolutely, but only if the Richter lets you use it. A lady from Bemidji asks, how often should the average person get a checkup? Now, that is a question that deserves answering. Uh, sir, aren't you going to answer it? What? That question. Oh, Francis got key. The checkup question. Right. Uh, first of all, health-wise, there's no such thing as the average person. The American Cancer Society says how often you need a checkup depends on many things, like being in a high-risk group. Can you give us an example? Yes. Well? Oh, uh, cigarette smokers, for instance, fall into your high-risk group. So let your doctor tell you which health tests apply to you. Right, and help fight cancer with a check to your American Cancer Society. Now, our final question. Who wrote the Star-Spangled Banner? I'll bite. Who? The Seattle Mariners are just coming off that East Coast road trip where they won three and lost five. And uh, the Yankees are coming off one of their longest homestands of the season. As a matter of fact, their second longest homestand of the year. 
and it was not a very successful one for them as they won only four of 12 games, but included in those four victories was their first home series win when they beat this very same Seattle Mariners team two games to one in a weekend series last weekend. Included in the uh, one victory for the Seattle Mariners was Gaylord Perry's 6-3 win uh, over the Yankees. Doyle Alexander started that game uh, for the uh, New York Yankees and was the losing pitcher in the contest. All right, Willie Randolph is stepping in to lead it out for the Yankees as New York hopes to uh, put things together here with a couple of new additions. John Mayberry, who's in the lineup tonight, and Steve Balboni, who is in uniform and in the Yankees dugout. Randolph stepping in and to bring you all the play-by-play -play action. Here's Bill White. All right, John Gordon, Willie Randolph batting at 341 this year. A couple of home runs, a dozen runs batted in. It'll be Randolph, Ken Griffey, and Jerry Mumphrey against Gaylord Perry. As John mentioned to you, the last time out on Friday, Perry beat the Yankees for his 299th win. And the first pitch to Randolph is a ball strike. Perry gave up seven base hits in that game. Randolph got two of them. Mumphrey got two. Westfield also tough when Luke Pinella as a pinch hitter got the seven foot. Gaylord pitched eight and two thirds innings. Gave up uh, three runs on seven hits. And the next pitch to Randolph. Front of that miss. Two strikes on Randolph. Gaylord Perry trying to become the 15th pitcher in Major League history to win 300 ball games. Of course, the number one winner, Denton Cy Young. The last one to do it, early win. Before him, Lefty Grove. Here's the two-strike pitch to Willie Randolph. Swung on, bounce towards first base, backing up there as a first base, and he's got it. And Mailer will take himself, there's one away. Jim Mailer on a bounce out. It's Randolph, and here's Ken Griffey. This is the first time this year Griffey's batted second, John Gordon. Yeah, there's a little bit of a shakeup in the lineup once again. Mumphrey's in the number three spot, and he had been uh, dropped down to number six in the series against the Oakland A's, but Griffey's up there in number two, and hopeful of being able to snap out of his uh, recent slump. That's 239 coming into the ballgame. Well, Griffey, for the first time in his American League career, playing on artificial surface, which he was used to at Cincinnati. So Griffey batting 239, no home runs, four runs batted in. Maybe he'll feel more at home on this surface. Here's Perry's first pitch to Griffey. And it's a strike on the outside corner. Manny Castillo at third base for the Mariners. Todd Cruz is the shortstop. Second base is Julio Cruz. And at first base, uh, New Yorker, born in New York, Jim Mailer. Bruce Boxy in left, Joe Simpson in center, and Al Cowan's on it right field. The one strike pitch is low and inside. It's one and one on Griffey. On, go ahead. As expected, uh, a lot of media coverage here tonight, Bill. All the networks are here. There has uh, been a lot of hoopla before the game. Family members of Big Gaylord Perry in attendance. Here's the one one to Griffey. Third ball is high. Two balls and a strike. I guess the Perry brothers uh, won more games than any other brother combination in baseball. Jim is here tonight. Of course, the Negro is trying to catch it. Here's the 2-1 uh, pitch. Check swing, call strike, two balls, two strikes on Griffey. Ken Griffey coming to the Yankees from the Cincinnati Reds. Having a slow spring. Two and two on Griffey with one out. Nobody on top of the first. Perry pitch. Too high. Three and two. Perry Mumphrey on deck. The count is full on Ken Griffey. Perry taking plenty of time. When he's on the mound, you've got a three-hour ball game. He's pitching time. So get relaxed there at home. And the pitch. About four seconds, Cruz backs up, plays the top up, lifts the first, and it's got Griffey. Two out. Julio Cruz backed up on that ball and played a bad hop and then almost threw it past his first baseman, Jim Mailer, but Mailer kept his foot on the back for out number two, and here's Jerry Mumphrey. He almost turned a regular routine ground ball into a bad play, didn't he? Well, that's what uh, happens sometimes when you put on the dog a little bit. Cruz is an excellent player. He really doesn't have to do that. But when he does do it, it's, I think it's 
overshadows the fact he's played well. Here's Jerry Mumphrey, the center fielder. He's batting at 276 with nine runs batted in. Two up, nobody on top of the first. And here's the pitch to Mumphrey. And it's a strike on the outside corner. Ken Kaiser is the home plate umpire. Jerry Newdecker is at first base. Bill Haller is at second. And George Maloney's over at third. Count. One strike on Mumphrey. Jerry Rock kicks the deal to one strike pitch. Fastball low and in. It's one and one. Perry taking plenty of time. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Low and inside. Let's see, the Perry brothers have 512 wins between them. Now add two more for Gaylord here in 1982, so that's 5-14. Three brothers, John, Art, and Walt Sparkson have 386. Bill and Joe Nico have 385. That ball is fouled straight down by Mumphrey. Count remains two and two. I don't think the Negroes will catch it. Bill, 43 years old. As is Gaylord Perry, 43 years old. Joe's will pick up. Natural pitching is uh, filled in with uh, a lot of his bills that have been on the disabled list and is just now getting cranked up with the Atlanta Braves. This is the first hit. Three weeks of the National League season. Here's Perry, 2-2 two -two pitch to Mumphrey. Swung on, lifted into right center. On the run is the right fielder. Cowan will not get to it. It'll go to the wall. Mumphrey around first, digging for second. He's going to drive for three. The throw will not be in time. Jerry Mumphrey has tripled with two outs here in the first inning. Kind of surprised that he went for the three bagger, but uh, he did like it. The relay was just a little bit late. And Humphrey gets the uh, three base hit. Pretty close play at third base, though. So. And he uh, dove in head first. Might have uh, winded himself a little bit. He has his head down. There's Austin Joe Alcabelli, the Yankee third base coach. But now he's back at the third base. So a triple by Jerry Humphrey with two down here in the first inning. That'll bring on John Mayberry. Big John making his first plate appearance as the Yankee. He wasn't used much in Toronto. He's only up 30-some uh, times. Batted 273 for the Blue Jays. Two home runs, three runs batted in. So John Mayberry facing Gaylord Perry. And the first pitch to Mayberry. The strike on the outside corner. Frank Messer has the story, uh, John Gordon. Mayberry hit his first Major League home run off Gaylord Perry. That was in the National League, and he hit his first American League home run off Gaylord Perry. Maybe he could hit his first New York Yankee home run <laughs> off of Gaylord Perry. <laughs> well, Mayberry, a low ball hitter, and of course, uh, when um, Perry loads the ball up, it usually sinks. There's a pitch to sunk down and away, one and one on Mayberry. No score, top of the first. Humphrey, who tripled, is the third base with two up. On deck of Dave Winfield. With Bumphrey third, Perry taking a set position. He's not winding up. The pitch to Mayberry. Check swing, low. Two balls and a strike. This is a good part for uh, the long ball hitter. 316 down the right field foul line and the left field foul line. 410 feet straight away. Understand they used to have some signs at 356 and left center right center, but it's closer to 336. 2-1 to Mayberry. Swung on, bounce the first foul. That by Mike Carrero, the Yankee first base coach. 2-2. Two two. So I understand the uh, wall in right field is extended for the 1982 season. Is that right? Higher? Yeah, looks higher. Double the strike buzz that said the height double out there. Not having seen this park, uh, this is the first time here in Seattle, but they just poke too many out right field, I guess, so they put an extension on it. 23 feet high. Now Barry set. 2-2 two, two to Mayberry. Check swing low. Ball three. Three and two. That wall evidently used to be 11 feet, six inches all the way around, but starting out in uh, a little bit in right center field. 
almost straight away center. They've added another 12 feet, right? Yep, made it 23 feet. So now Perry's going to wind up as Mumphrey moves off third base. Here's the payoff pitch to Mayberry. Swung on, popped up, left side, the shortstop. Todd Cruz is there, makes the play, and now he's out of the side. So the Yankees in the first inning, no runs on one base hit, and they leave uh, Mumphrey at third base. At the end of one half inning of play, the Yankees nothing, the Mariners are coming to bat. Time goes by so quickly, and the day you once thought was so far away is upon you before you know it. I'm E.G. Marshall reminding you that now is the time to open an individual retirement or Keo account at Albany Savings Bank. Deposit up to $2,000 a year in an IRA, up to $15,000 in a Keo if you're self-employed. Tax deductible deposits, even if you already belong to a pension plan. Get full details at any office of Albany Savings Bank, the Savings People Bank committed to you. A reminder, there is a substantial penalty for early withdrawal. You could win a fabulous Atari 400 home computer. That's right. Your family could enter the computer age with the help of WROW Radio and the computer room. Here's how you can win. On a standard postcard, write this phrase, the computer room, your Atari headquarters. Write the phrase as many times as you can on the back of the postcard. The listener who writes the computer room, your Atari headquarters, the most times on the back of a standard postcard will win the famous Atari 400 home computer, valued at $750. Prize in exchange for promotional considerations by the computer room, 1694 Central Avenue, Albany. Send your postcard to WROW Radio, 341 Northern Boulevard, Albany, 12204. That's WROW Radio, 341 Northern Boulevard, Albany, 12204. And don't forget your return address. To be eligible, all entries must be received by midnight, May 14th, 1982. Besides the grand prize, we'll also give away great-looking computer room interface t-shirts on a random drawing basis. Listen for more details on the Bill Shockross Show, mornings on Radio 59, WROW. Here on the hill for the Yankees tonight. Uh, Doyle Floss was to the Detroit Tigers when he was defeated 7-2 in a game at uh, Yankee Stadium. And then he had a no decision game against Gaylord Perry and the Seattle Mariners last Friday night. He went seven innings, and when he left the game, the Yankees were leading, and Goose Gossage was on to try to save it for him, but Goose was, uh, Goose was roughed up in the ball game, and he was the losing pitcher. So Gaylord is 0-1, uh, tough fire this year, and uh, lifetime against the Seattle probably five and four, but all of his decisions against Seattle have been from his uh, time with the Texas Rangers when he pitched with them. Here are the uh, Mariners now. Julio Cruz to lead it off, but once again, Bill. All right, John, first pitch to Cruz. Takes the curve ball, first call strike. Julio, a switch hitter, batting 229. The home run, five runs batted in. Bottom of the first scoreless ball game. Cruz, Castillo, and Bakhti against Joel Alexander. Fat ball, fake bunt taken high. It's one and one. Well, the Mariners have recalled former Yankee Bobby Brown. Dave Henderson has been placed on the disabled list by the Mariners, and Bobby Brown has been recalled. 1-1 one, one pitch, but it foul back up on the screen. One ball, two strikes on Cruz. Molly is the third baseman. Then is the shortstop, Willie Randolph in second, and John Mayberry is the first baseman. Winfield in left, Mumphrey in center, and uh, Ken Griffey out in right. They're playing uh, Cruz straight away, not too deep. The one-two pitch, bounce towards second, Randolph charge, digs it out, goes on the first base, and Cruz is the first out here in the first inning. Well, Bill, the Texas Rangers go down to defeat for the 12th straight time. Boston beat them 5-2. to two. Now, that means that the uh, Red Sox will be 18-8 and eight on the year, and the Yankees would have to win here tonight just to remain six and a half behind the Eastern Division leading Boston Red Sox. To the ninth of Minnesota batting and trailing uh, Milwaukee, uh, six to two. Baltimore, California, Cleveland, and Oakland, other American League games tonight. Here's Manny Castillo, another switch hitter in left-handed, and he takes the pitch low and away, ball one. Three down, Texas lost last night. Yeah, they, they've had like three or four losses in the streak that have been just like that, very bizarre. one old pitch is a call strike, it's one and one. Put on the hit and run with the base and loaded one out. Picture the hitter doesn't get the hit and run. Bill Stein, I think, missed it. Yep. They lose 6 4. Here's the 1 1 pitch to Castillo. Bounce towards second. Randolph charges. Plays a big hop. Little flip to Mayberry. First base or two up. 
Rangers had uh, a couple of games where they were leading late in the game and the double play would have ended the game and stopped the streak and they threw the ball in the dugout both times to keep innings alive and keep the losing streak alive. Mets and uh, Frisco, rain delay, 3-3 at Shea Stadium. Dodgers beat Montreal 3-2 in Philadelphia. Bombarded San Diego 12-7 uh, in a game at the Vets tonight. All right, here's Bruce Bakke, the left fielder, batting 326, and uh, he takes outside. Bakke, a left-handed batter. The home run, 10 runs batted in. Yankees play him straight away. Two outs, nobody on, no score. Bottom half the first inning. Alexander's fastball is low, it's 2-0. Oh. Doyle is 0-1 this year for the Yankees. He's making his third start of the year. As an uh, ERA of 4.15. Rock kicks and deals the 2-0 pitch. Bakke uh, takes high, ball three. On deck is Richie Zitt. San Francisco just scored two in the ninth and now leads 5-3 uh, over the match, so the Game is resumed after the rain delay. That ball hit Dick Bivin a deep right center field up to be up against the wall. Bouncing up against the wall and Bakke will go into second base with a stand-up double. Well, Bakke got a green light on a 3-0 pitch and got a fastball and drilled it into right center field for a stand-up double. Well, each team hitting the ball hard after two men are out. Humphrey tripled after two men were down in the first inning, but he was left stranded when Mayberry popped up. Bossy just got the green light on a 3-0 pitch and drilled it into right center field for a stand-up double with two outs. Here in the bottom of the first, that'll bring on Richie Zitt, the designated hitter for the Mariners. Zitt batting at 3-0-1 with two home runs and ten runs batted in. Alexander wants another sign to throw and get now the right-hander set. And the pitch to Zitt. Cut ball, swung on and miss. No ball set to strike. Foxy has a short lead at second base. Now he takes a couple more steps. Alexander getting a sign. Now he's set. And check. And backs off. And Foxy goes back to second. Now time to call. Throw wants to talk to Alexander. Well, this is the first of four games that will be played here between the Yankees and Seattle Americans. And in all honesty, I think uh, the Yankees need to win all four. They won nine, lost 13 this year. Got to get back at uh, 500 again and work from there. Now Alexander sets. And the pitch in the dirt blocked nicely by Theron. It's one and one. One thing the Yankees want to try to avoid, I think more than anything else, uh, Bill, with Boston and Detroit playing as well as they are right now, you don't want to get 10, 11 games behind. And uh, they're six and a half back right now, so putting together a little win streak on the road trip certainly would help their chances of staying uh, or gaining on the Boston Red Sox. Well, they normally don't play well here at the King Dome. This is it. Bill the center field. Ah, oh, Jerry Buffery on the run. He's there. Back bending. Makes the catch. That'll be time to stop. This hit the ball hard, but Mumphrey ran it down. No runs, the base hit, one man left on base at the end of one. Yankees nothing, the Mariners nothing. I've had enough. Come on, Bob. There's nothing like a good run first thing in the morning. We've already gone two miles. The best part's just half a mile away. My feet. Fresh scrambled eggs. Breakfast. Sizzling sausage. Mm. And golden hash brown. Hash brown. Over an egg McMuffin. McDonald's. Start your morning run. With the dawn of the sun. Smell the cooking in the air. You know McDonald's is waiting there. That was great. Let's do this every day. Run every day. You go get up this morning and get away. You said run. I'll bring the car and meet you here. To McDonald's. heritage at Anheuser-Busch that says never be satisfied until you've achieved the best. Budweiser Light, with its clean, distinctive taste, lives up to that heritage. Bring out your best Budweiser Light. Bring out your best Budweiser Light. The best never comes easy. That's why there's nothing else like it. Budweiser Light. Anheuser-Busch, thank you.
St. Louis, Missouri. Well, we have a note from the game at uh, Anaheim with the California Angels and the Baltimore Orioles. Tippy Martinez is now pitching for Baltimore in the first inning. Jim Palmer, who started, faced only two batters and left the game with an injury. The reports to follow, so we'll see whether or not it's a serious one to the Orioles' right-hander, Jim Palmer. Well, all right, John Day Winfield against the Gaylord Ferry, top of the second of the scoreless ball game. It'll be Winfield and Gamble and Roy Smalley against the right-hander. Winfield now batting at 291, three home runs. He leads the Yankees with 16 runs batted in. Perry wants another sign from Bullion and gets it. And the first pitch to Winfield. Swung on, drilled foul down the right side. That'll make the deep and out of play. No ball is then to strike on Winfield. They play Winfield straight away, and deep the left field with Bakke. Should be a good ballpark for Winfield. The next pitch, Bill foul again down the right side. Count remains, count no, the count runs, no ball, two strikes on Winfield. They took kind of a Buckman's holiday last night, and watched the Seattle Supersonics and the uh, San Antonio Spurs in their playoff game here at the Kingdom. Of course, he used to play basketball at the University of Minnesota. One of, few, one of the few players who might have gotten drafted by all three major sports. That's right. Here's a two-strike pitch to Winfield. Breaking ball, check the swing, just check it in time. One and two. Yankees, by bringing up Balboni, have some pretty big people who have been in the middle of their lineup. Mayberry is 6'3", Winfield is 6'6", and Balboni is 6'6". If they should have played the... Uh, <laughs> how big is Balboni? Frank 6'4", 6'2". Frank Messick is Balboni 6'2". Winfield swings, and this is the third ball. Now that's the first out. First strikeout for Perry. Maybe they should have been playing the San Antonio Spurs last night instead of the Supersonics. Winfield and Mayberry and Balboni. Molly's not too short either. I think Willie Randolph's a quick guard, right? Yeah, a little point guard. <laughs> Very foot 6'3". He's a little bit too slow, though. I don't know. Guys run around footy. Here's Gamble. Oscar batting at 115 with a run batted in. Oh, George Frazier's 6'5". Put together a pretty good uh, basketball team, height-wise. But, well, the Sonny's got a couple guys seven feet. Sigma, Donald. <laughs> First pitch to Gamble. Third ball swung on a miss. Are you going to coach the team or? Uh... No, no, no. I would coach the football team. Is that right? I right, basketball. I was... would coach the basketball team. <laughs> Just have to make sure the coach shows up, that's all. Get him off the golf course. <laughs> one strike on Oscar Gamble. Barry Rocks and deals the one strike pitch to Gamble. Curve, hit in the air, center field. Backing up for slowly as Simpson. Now he turns, backpedaling, and makes the catch near the warning track to us. Well, hit by Oscar. You know, Bill, I wanted to comment. This is a guy we just got to get hot here. Oscar Gamble, who's been from the left side in the D8 role, uh, coming in at 115, and he's a streak hitter, and maybe he can find it here on this road trip and uh, really get things going for himself and help the Yankees. Well, it's uh, two, two outs, nobody on. Smalley's a batter. He's hitting 224, two home runs and 10 runs batted in. Smalley is switch hitter and left-handed. And the first pitch to Smalley. That ball is too high, ball one. Two outs, nobody on, no score at top of the set. Yankees on the Seattle Mariners in the first game of a four-game series. Yankees took two out of three at Yankee Stadium earlier from Seattle. Had to work for those wins. 1-0 pitch is high. Two balls, no strikes. On Smalley. Perry is starting a sixth game. He has two complete games. He's won two, lost two with a 3.72 ERA. His last one, of course, coming over the Yankees last Friday at the stadium. Now the 2-0 to Smalley. Swung on, takes it right field. Over in the corner is Cowan, and he'll get it in, and Smalley will hold it first with a single. And we'll take 10 seconds for station identification on the New York Yankee Baseball Network.
Stay with the winners. Keep listening to Yankee Baseball on Radio 59, WROW Albany. So it's finally a two-out single at first base. That'll bring on Rick Theroux the Yankee catch. Rick batting a 206 with a home run, seven runs batted in. The base hit by Small the Yankees second. Following the uh, triple by Jerry Mumphrey with two outs in the first inning. Now Perry taking plenty of time, bending four for time. Now he sets. And the pitch to Sarone is in there, a call strike. Now Perry taking plenty of time. Molly at first base, two down. Gaylord set. Looks over his left shoulder. The one strike pitch to Cerrone. Bounce right back to Perry. Backhand. Throws the first base. They've got the ball now retired inside. No runs to base it. Once again, the Yankees leave a man off. At the end of one and a half, the Yankees nothing. Seattle nothing. <laughs> There's one thing that most homeowners learn early on. Garrity Home Center has what they need. Garrity Home Center carries only the finest materials for repairs or remodeling. And they offer free expert advice to make any job a lot easier. Remodel with kitchen cabinets and bath vanities by Connors. Or bring in the sun with roto roof windows. Make summer more fun with treated decking. Or install quality screen doors at a pleasing price. At Garrity Home Center, you'll find just what you need for every room in your home. But that's just part of the story. Every home handbag can use some help from time to time. And Garrity Home Center is ready to help. They even hold free clinics with manufacturer's representatives on hand to help with specific projects. Homeowning is a lot easier because Garrity Home Center has what you need. Garrity Home Center at the corner of Fuller Road and Railroad Avenue in Albany. I'm Richard Hill, WROW Sports. For the full season of Yankee baseball, listen to WROW. And keep that radio tuned to 59 AM for my morning sports reports, all the major league scores, and the important local and national sports developments. Evenings at 5.05, my sports commentary. Then stay tuned for Bob Buck's sports report and Dr. Paul Donahue's report on sports medicine for the amateur athlete in our 6 p.m. news block. Each weekend afternoon, Don Chevrier has ABC Weekend Sports. For sports fans, WROW is all the radio you need. Well, no score after an inning and a half of play, and the Mariners coming to bat in the bottom of the second inning. Ty Cruz, Al Collins, and Joe Simpson. Uh, Bill mentioned that this is the first of a four-game series with the Mariners and the Yankees. Uh, Floyd Bannister against Mike Morgan tomorrow night. Jim Beattie against Ron Guidry Saturday night. And a Sunday night game that starts at 7.05 will feature Gene Nelson against Tommy John. All right, Bill. Todd Cruz then against Will Alexander in the second inning. And uh, he takes the ball too low, ball one. Cruz, the shortstop for the Mariners, batting at 319. Three home runs, eight runs batted in. Bottom of the second in a scoreless ball game. Alexander working quickly. Overhand fastball. One and this is one and one. It'll be Cruz, Cowens, and Simpson for the Mariners. Here in the bottom of the second. The 1-1 one, one pitch to Cruz. Best ball. Low two balls and a strike. Chuck Cotier coaching at third base for the Mariners and Veda Pinson coaching first base. Now Alexander backs off. He wants another sign from Cerrone. 2-1 pitch. Breaking ball. Swung on. Missed 2-2 two two on Cruz. And the 2-2 two two delivery. Swung on and missed. Got him with the ball going down and in. Strike out number one for uh, Alexander. And there is one away here in the second. Well, hadn't had a lot of strikeouts or walks, for that matter, in the 13-plus uh, innings that he's worked for the Yankees. That's only his fourth strikeout. He's only walked two, but he's that type of pitcher. He lets the defense uh, win ball games for him behind him. Al Cowan's a right fielder, batting 186 with four home runs and 11 runs batted in. He's a right-handed hitter. And the first pitch to Cowan. 
curveball. Breaks down and in for a strike. No balls and one strike on Cowan. Cowan stands well off the plate. The one strike pitch. That ball. Just a bit low. It's what it was. One out. Nobody on. Playing the bottom of the second here at the King Dome. No score in the ball game. Here's a 1-1 pitch to Collins. Great change in the air left field. Coming on is Dave Winfield. Winfield is there. And one-handed for out number two. So two up, two down. Here's Joe Simpson, the center fielder. Simpson's a left-handed batter. He's hitting 256 this year with four runs batted in. Well, if this ball game goes according uh, to the way it's been going, Simpson will get a base hit. Alexander's first pitch to Joe Simpson. Fastball. The call strike, the letter high. Fastball. Strike one. Simpson and Henderson have been platooning in center field. Now with Henderson out, I guess Bobby Brown will probably play against the uh, left-handers. And the fastball misses outside. It's one and one. Of course, Brown's a switch hitter. I think uh, Bobby has some problems hitting for right hand. He does. Uh, he's not a good at Okay, jump right the hand. first. Mayberry's got it. And John will take it himself. He touches up in front of Simpson. That'll retire the side. Three up, three down. At the end of two, the Yankees, nothing. The Mariners, nothing. For all the ways that we can fly, for all the highways to the sky, of all the ways that greet the sun, Easter is your number one. The pride of Easter is shining through, we earn our wings by seeing you come meet us. the third year in a row now, more passengers have flown Eastern than any other airline in the free world. If you helped make us America's favorite way to fly, we thank you. If you haven't flown Eastern recently, give us a try. We'll show you we really do earn our wings every day. We're that are played back on the East Coast or in the Midwest. Uh, Boston beats Texas 5-2, and that's 12 straight losses in a row for the Rangers. Uh, Milwaukee is a 6-3 winner over Minnesota. Uh, the Coast game just starting. California leads uh, Baltimore 2-1 after an inning of play. Cleveland didn't score against Oakland and Steve McCatty in their game at uh, Oakland. Uh, the Giants beat the match 5-3. Dodgers beat Montreal 3-2, and uh, Philadelphia beat San Diego 12-7. And here's Bill. All right, John, Bucky did up against uh, Gaylord Perry at top of the third of a scoreless ball game. The first pitch is upside ball one. Bucky batting at 182 with two runs batted in. It'll be Dent and back up top with Randolph and uh, Ken Griffey. Perry's 1-0 pitch to Dent. Swung on, popped up right side in foul territory. The first baseman, Jim Mailer, he's calling. And makes the catch for the first up. I want to mention that uh, Frank Messer will have all the scores of all the games with the particulars, uh, the winning and losing pitchers, home runs, updates on the standings on the Getty Scoreboard Show after our broadcast tonight. Willie Randolph has been up once, bounced the first. Willie now at 337. Perry goes through the ritual of Feet to the cap, the hair to the air, under on the brow, rod and bag, the hair again to the peak of the cap. Now he's ready. First pitch to Randolph. 
is a called strike, a slide around the outside corner. The third baseman, Manny Castillo, even with the bag there. Randolph back out. Now he's back in. Perry's one strike pitch to Randolph. Check swing low, it's one and one. Yankees have a two-out triple by Mumphrey in the first inning. He was left stranded, and a two-out single by Smalley in the second. He was left stranded. So they've got no runs on two hits. The Mariners no runs on one. It's early. We're just in the top half of the third inning with one out, nobody on. Henry's 1-1 one, one pitch to Randolph. Swung on and fouled back. It's one and two. And the Perry gets a new baseball. Forty-three years old, two hundred and ninety-nine wins. The one-two pitch, low sinker, two balls, two strikes on Randolph. Spotlight certainly is on Gaylord tonight to win number 300 and uh, become one of 15, but he's also got a chance to become eventually the leading strikeout artist in Major League Baseball. Top the third, big hop there for Castillo. High throw the first and until the first base is in. And it'll go out to right field and Randolph will cruise into second base as Cowan, the right fielder, corrals the ball in the Yankee bullpen down the right side. That should be a two-base error on the third base for Manny Castillo. Oh, he threw that one away, didn't he? Well, he's got a good arm. We yeah. saw in New York that he had an excellent arm. Right. And just got away from him. And uh, Mailer's such a big target over at first base. He's got great size. He goes like about 6'5". And ball went way over his head and down to the right field bullpen area. Willie had to play in front of him uh, for the most part so he could see where he could gain second base. Tear him off the wall. So a two-base throwing error charged to Manny Castillo. The Mariner third base and Randolph at second base with one away. Here's Ken Griffey. Griffey's been up once, bounced the set. The set and the pitch. Swung on and fouled back. No balls and a strike on Griffey. On deck is Jerry Mumphrey. The Yankees trying to get on the board first here in the Kingdom. They've had their problems here over the years. Mariners seem to play better here. The Yankees don't play as well as they normally play. Swing and a miss by Griffey. No ball, two strikes. Right here, the Mariners have taken 17 of the 26 games played. So they're 17 and 9 against the Yankees here at the Kingdom. Overall, though, the Yankees have 131, lost 22. Perry pitch is slight foul down the left side. Back to 17 and 9 dome record against the Yankees is the Mariners' best home record against all opponents. Well, they like when the Yankees come in here. Not only do they, does their attendance uh, go, go up, but uh, they play better or they seem to win. Now Perry set. Here's the two strike pitch to Griffey. Swung on line, breaks it right field. Randolph around third. And he'll be held there as Cowan gets the ball and throws a strike to bullet the catcher. Looks like it might have been a heads up play by Al Belly with the throw coming from Cowan. He threw a strike to I, his catcher, Terry Bullock. I believe it was. It was well stroked by Griffey, and Cowan's had a good play. Uh, Randolph didn't get a real good break at second base, uh, even with the ball being hit on the right side of the infield. And when it made it through, uh, Willie then started to really turn it on, and uh, Aldebelli wisely held him up because I believe they would have had him with that throw that Cowan had. So Cowan with a fine throw, holding Randolph at third base. So the Yankees have runners at first and third with one down, and here's Jerry Mumphrey, who tripled with two outs in the first inning. Mumphrey, a switch hitter in left hand. Mariner infield back, looking for two. Pitch to Mumphrey. Swung on, bounce to short, might be two. Throw to second for one, back to first, double play. Six, four to three, and the Mariners got a double. No run, one hit, one error. And the Yankees lead the man. At the end of two and a half innings of play, 
Yankees nothing, Seattle nothing. Bring up the goodness when you bring up the dry hoppers, bread and cakes naturally. Taste bakery goodness when you bring up the fry hoppers, goodness for your family. Come the fry hopper family puts goodness into everything we make. So you'll bring up the best when you choose a family name. Night is falling, and the barnets are out. The house is quiet, but suddenly the sound of glass shatters the night. As a sinister figure breaks the barnet's basement window and crawls inside. Meanwhile, across the street, a sweet old lady is holding a walkie-talkie. Breaking and entering on Spring Street. Suddenly, a slouched figure appears, wearing a trench coat, and he's eating... A dog biscuit. Nice job, lady. Now, solve that mystery. Will the cook get away? Who's the old lady? And who's that eating the dog biscuit? Oh, why, uh, that's me. McGraw, the crime dog here. And the little old lady is Mimi Marth of Hartford, Connecticut. She's one of the many citizens working together to protect her and neighborhood. And she used her walkie-talkie to call the cops. And the cops just nabbed the crook. That's one way to, uh, oh, take a bite out of crime. Message from the Crime Prevention Coalition and the Ad Council. Uh, Jim Mailer is the leadoff batter for the Mariners in the bottom of the third inning. He's the number eight hitter in the order, followed by Terry Bulling and then Julio Cruz, Don Alexander, and Gaylord Perry lacking horns and no score so far. First pitch to Mailer is down low ball one. Youngster is in a slump. He's over 18. Up down into the eighth spot. He's batting 238 on the air. Three home runs, 16 runs batted in. Big fella, 6'5, goes 230. Fastball hit deep to left center. On the run is Humphrey. And it's up against the wall. Bounces back in towards center field. Winfield over there. Mailer will end up at third base with a stand up triple. Well, that's a way to break it. Trump Mailer jumping on a pitch out away from it. It hit the top of the wall in deep left center field for a stand up triple. Now, normally, a ball hit to that area won't go for three bases, but Jerry Mumphrey felt as he was going to the ball that he had a chance of catching it. Then at the last moment, he discovered that he didn't. And he could not play the carom and went by him, and Winfield had to chase it down in dead center field. By the time he did, Mailer had the three bags. So Mailer at third base with a leadoff triple, and that'll bring on Terry Pulling, the catcher. Pulling batting at even 300 uh, with no home runs and two runs batted in. Yankees will, let's see, they'll have the right side of their infield in. Smalls will also play in, and Denton. Now Randolph backs up, so uh, Denton and Randolph will play back. But Mayberry and Smalley will play in. First pitch is fouled back and out of play. Well, the Mariners trying to get on the board first here in the third inning, the scoreless ball game, but Mayler is third with nobody out. Alexander has just worked the knot for him here in the third inning. He set. The one strike pitch to Bully. Swung on and fouled straight down, two strikes on Bully. Alexander with the new baseball. Bullings a right-handed hitter. Jim Hesse had wanted to catch uh, Gaylord Perry in Perry's quest for his 300 tonight, but Bulling has been doing a good job catching the right-hander. Now the 0-2 pitch to Bulling. Change up, bounce foul outside of third base. The count remains, no ball, two strikes. Jim Mailer at third base. Nobody out. Mailer just broke an 0 for 18 the slump. Takes a short lead there at third. And the 0-2 pitch to Bully. Swung on foul. Off goes the pitcher out of the center field. Base it. Alexander couldn't control the ball. Base it. Bully. Mailer scores easily. The Mariners lead one to nothing. That'll be a base hit for Terry Bulling and a smack back up the middle. Bounced off the glove of Doyle Alexander, high off his glove out of the center field. 
So Bulling has just driven in his third run of the year. And given the Mariners a one to nothing lead, and here's Julio Cruz, the second baseman. Cruz has been up once and bounced to second. He bumps at it and misses it. Hot bunt by Cruz. Strike one. He dropped the bat at the ball. He didn't go after that one with a whole lot of authority. He was trying to, as far as trying to get it down. Mayberry holding, bullying at first. The pitch outside, it's one and one. Nobody out here in the third inning. Mariners have taken a one to nothing lead on a leadoff triple by Jim Mailer and an RBI single by Terry Bulling. Now Alexander sets. The one one pitch, he squares, but soft third. Pretty good front. The rolls out, throws the first, and he throws it away off the Randolph Club. Taylor will be held at third base as Cruz goes into second base. Took quite a bit of time. He looked down at second base, not really realizing that Cruz could fly. And by the time he came up throwing the first, he threw it too late. The ball barreled off Randolph Club and went there to the stand with Bulling going to third and Cruz going into second base. So that'll be a sacrifice. It'll be an E2. That was really a hard play for Randolph at first base because uh, Cerrone's throw was getting there, so was Cruz, and the ball actually almost hit Cruz as he was crossing first base, and it wasn't the opportunity for Randolph to make the play. So with runners at second and third, nobody out. Manny Castillo's the batter. He's been up once and bounced to second. Infield back. Change up, swung on and missed by Castillo. Mayberry now moves in at first base. I moved back a couple of steps, so John will have a play home. Randolph and Dent playing at their normal position. That's the second base shortstop. Here's a one-strike pitch. In the dirt, blocked by Cerrone. It's one and one. Mariners lead one to nothing and threatening to put more runs on the board here. They have runners at second and third. Nobody out in the bottom of the third. One thing, Bowling doesn't have great speed at third base, so... Uh, Mayberry can afford to play back just a little bit. Uh, Smalley's even with a bag of third, but that guy at second base, Cruz, he can fly. Now Alexander has a sign. It's a, it's a one one pitch. Change up. Lifted at the shallow left. Dead going back. He will not get to it. Base hit. One run score. Cruz around third. The throw there will hold him now at third base. And on the throw home, Castillo goes into second base. Cruz took a long turnaround third. Winfield uh, really made a good throw to Cerrone. Cruz held up and went back to third base. But on the throw, Castillo snuck into second. So the Mariners now lead at 2 nothing. It took a lot for Cotier to uh, stop Cruz at third base. He really wanted to score on that play. I think he's pretty jacked up, and of course that's the way he plays anyway, but Winfield would have nailed him for sure had he tried to score because Dave had to play right in front of him. It was just a little looper in the shallow left field, and I don't think Cruz would have been able to score at all from second base. So the Mariners once again run to second and third with nobody out, and the batter is Bruce Bakke, the left fielder. He doubled in the right center field his first time up. Nobody getting loose in the Yankee bullpen. Mariners lead 2-0, two, two runs, four hits. Yankees no run, three. We're the bottom half of the third inning. Here's a pitch to Bakhti. Swung on and fouled back. No balls and a strike. Well, the Mariners using a leadoff triple by Jim Mailer, an RBI single by Terry Bulling. A sacrifice and a throwing error on Rick Cerrone. And an RBI single by Manny Castillo lead 2-0. Well, the Yankees seem to be reverting to their former ways playing here at the Kingdom. We mentioned the uh, Mariners have beaten them 17 times out of 26. Pitch is misses inside. A ball and a strike on Bakke. Cruz off third base. Castillo off second. Nobody out. 1-1 one, one pitch. Change up. Pop foul off third base. Smalley has room. Over there the stands and makes the catch. And Cruz has to uh, hold. 
Smalley throws the ball in, uh, but Cerrone uh, blocks it and ends up halfway to third base, chasing the ball down. So there's one away. Runner still at second and third. Rick played that one like a hockey goalie and just blocked it off of his uh, chest protector, and the ball rolled in front of him and uh, nearly rolled to where Cruz could have sailed past him, except for the fact that Doyle Alexander was doing his job and backing up the play at home plate. Here's Richie Zist batting with runner at the second and third. One down now. Zist has been up once and fly to Mumphrey in center field. On deck is Todd Cruz, the shortstop. Mariners lead 2-0. They're batting in the bottom of the third. Runners at second and third. One away. Smalley and Mayberry playing in close. Randolph and dead back. Here's a set. Pitch to Zist. In the dirt, low and away, ball one. They might pitch around this. He's got an open base, and Richie, of course, he'll hit the ball wherever it's pitched. Uh, Gene Michael was up and uh, almost out of the Yankees dugout, and it was instructing the infield that uh, it looked like they won't give this anything real good to hit here. Now the set by Alexander. The 1 0 pitch. Low, ball two, 2 0. Oh. Castillo walks off second. Alexander checks him. Here's a 2-0 pitch to this. Change up line. Foul off third base. Ball almost hit to Julio Cruz. He had to go down in a hurry to avoid being hit by that line shot off the bat of Richie Ziff. Well, they count two balls and a strike on this. Alexander gets a new baseball. He needs that. 2-1 pitch. Breaking ball. Gets the inside corner. It's 2-2. Two two. Now Smalley backs up a couple of steps to third base. But Mayberry, the first baseman, stays in. Here's a set. The 2-2 two two pitch. Swung on. Miss struck him off. The ball going down and in. Big strikeout for Doyle Alexander. And they're two out. Yeah, I wonder how close Gene Michael came to putting Zisk on at two balls and no strikes because with Alexander behind him like that, he certainly didn't want to give him anything good to hit that would score two runs, and then he comes back and strikes him out. So I know uh, right now they're not totally out of the woods, but at least there's a little bit of daylight. The second strikeout for Alexander. Now here's Cruz, who struck out in the second. Todd Cruz swings and misses the breaking ball. No balls and a strike. Two on, two out, Mariners leading 2 nothing. bottom of the third, here at the King Dome. Oh, last night they had 23,000 here to watch the San Antonio Spurs beat the Seattle Supersonics. The one strike pitch, swung on and fouled back, two strikes on Cruz. Alexander with a new ball. Now oh, he doesn't like it, slips it in. And Ken Kaiser will give him another one. So the count, no ball, two strikes on Todd Cruz. Runners at second and third, two out. Mariners ahead, two nothing in the third inning. Now the set. The 0-2 pitch. Swung on, base in right field. That was 4 2. Griffey over quickly, he'll get the ball into second base. The Mariners now lead 4 nothing. Cruz drifts one into right center field, scoring Cruz, Julio Cruz, and Manny Castillo. And Todd Cruz now has 10 runs batted in. Well, both those runs are unearned. And it's an 0-2 pitch that's lined in the right center for the base hit. Ten seconds for station identification on the New York Yankees Baseball Network. This is Radio 59, WROW Albany, bringing you Yankee Baseball. Now Cowan's a batter, and he takes low and away, one ball and no strikes. Chris base hit for the Mariners off Joel Alexander, who scored four runs. Yankees have made an error. Soft top the first base, back easily, Todd Cruz. Oh, 
Big hit for Todd Cruz. Here's the one on. Nope, that'll throw the first base. Cruz has to dive back in, he's sick. Good move by Alexander. Cowan's has been up once, by the left field. Now Alexander sets. And the pitch. It's a call strike, one and one. Cowan's batting at 184. He's a right-handed hitter. Here's a 1-1 one -one pitch. Curve. Call. Nope, it's a ball outside. It's 2-1. Two, two balls and a strike on Al Cowan. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Low ball, 3, 3-1. Three Todd Cruz at first base, two outs, and a 3-1 count on Al Cowan with Joe Simpson, the center fielder, on deck. Here's a 3, nope, he'll go to first base. A little quick move to first by Alexander. Cruz does not have a big lead there. Now the 3-1 delivery. Swung on, face hit right center, might go to the wall and score a run. Cruz around second, going for third. He'll score. Cowan's going for three, and he'll make it there with a triple. And right away, the Yankee bullpen gets up. Rudy May starts to throw. Mariners now lead 5-0. Last two hits, the uh, single by Cruz, Pat Cruz, and the triple by Collins. They're really shots. That one made it to the gap in right center, and by the time that uh, Jerry Mumphrey could play it, Collins turned the afterburners on and made it to third with a stand-up triple. Stan Williams is coming out now and wants to talk to right-hander Doyle Alexander, and as you just mentioned, Bill, uh, Rudy May starts to loosen up in the Yankees' bullpen. Well, the uh, Yankees will return home on the 21st of May against the Minnesota Twins, and on Saturday and Sunday, May 22 and 23, it's McDonald's Yankees Cap Weekend. All fans coming to the stadium on McDonald's Yankees Cap Weekend will receive a free official New York Yankees baseball cap, courtesy of the good friends at McDonald's. Excellent tickets for these games, and all Yankees home games are on sale now. This is the ninth batter to come to the plate in the inning. Joe Simpson bounced the first in the second inning. Mariners lead 5-0, and the pitch to Simpson is a fastball over the outside corner, strike one. Now Cowan's at third base, two down. All five runs coming here in the bottom of the third inning. Simpson pops one to third, and right there is Smalley, a little humpback line for Smalley. He makes the catch on the side, but Seattle scores five times. On five bases, one Yankee here, and they leave one man on base. At the end of three, the Mariners five, Yankees nothing. You've got the power underneath your feet when golf is with you. You've got the feeling of fighting any street when golf is with you. When you're trying to get up a hill and you've got a ten-ton truck staring you in the face, that's when you really need Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. It's one of the highest octane unleaded gasolines to help stop knocks and pins that can rob your car of the power it needs to pass, climb, and accelerate. Make sure you fill up on Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. You know, spraying is one of the most efficient economical ways to paint. And now for those small paint jobs around the home, Red Devil offers a 100% polyurethane spray enamel that gives you a long-lasting diamond heart finish. Features a patented spray head that's the closest thing to a professional spray gun. 
You can get Red Devil 100% polyurethane spray finishes and a variety of decorator enamels as well as stove and barbecue black, rust-proof primer and super fast drying lacquers and other special spray finishes. Available at all channel stores and your local Red Devil dealer. Well, we go to the fourth inning here at the King Dome in Seattle with the Mariners leading 5-0 and the Yankees middle third of the batting order. Mayberry, Winfield, and Gamble. And with the play-by-play, -play, here is John Gordon. All right, thank you, Frank Messer, and uh, good evening to you as we bring you the top of the fourth there. The Yankees certainly have their work cut out for them now, trailing by a 5 to nothing score. And don't you think that uh, Gaylord Perry has started counting the outs right now with that five spot, right, Frank? I'm sure he has. No matter how many games you win when you are in the situation as Gaylord is tonight, it's got to be just an exciting evening for him. Well, the fans have been very enthusiastic for him, and uh, rightly so. They'd like to see him get that 300 victory here tonight. Outside a ball to Mayberry, and it's one ball and one strike. Well, John, who's making his first appearance in a New York Yankees uniform, just recently acquired in a trade between the Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays. Mayberry coming to the Yankees, and Dave Revering and Jeff Reynolds. Uh, Revering with the Yankees, and Reynolds, who was down on the farm, traded through the Toronto club. Inside a ball, and it's two balls and one strike. Rudy May will start warming up again for the Yankees. He had stopped, came into the dugout, now he goes back to the bullpen area. He may be coming on in the fourth inning. Mayberry to be followed by Dave Winfield and then Oscar Gamble. And the Yankees trailing by five runs after the Mariners scored five in the bottom of the third off of Alexander. By the way, only two of the runs are earned off of Doyle. There's a strike, the fastball is in, and it's now a ball and two balls and two strikes to count to John Mayberry. Gene Michael very upset at playoff fire Ken Kaiser on that call. Now Gene, a very active manager in the dugout, and uh, he stands most of the time, and you can just barely see him from our vantage point here at the Kingdom. Swing and a miss, strike three. Mayberry goes down to the low breaking pitch. And that's going to be strikeout number two of the game for Gaylord Perry. Out number one for the Yankees here in the top half of the fourth inning. And stepping in will be Dave Whitfield. Mayberry told me that, see, this is Thursday. He hasn't even had batting practice since Monday. Mm -hmm. See, they weren't uh, using him at uh, Toronto. And he hadn't had a chance to do any hitting until he joined the Yankees today. He's been used at first base and as a designated hitter for the Blue Jays. But his... Uh, Activity with the Toronto club was not on a regular basis. Willie Upshaw has been playing first base mostly, and uh, I think Nordhaven has been uh, the designated hitter a lot for the Toronto club. Here's Winfield, struck out first time up, bouncer off the glove of Perry, Todd Cruz at second has it, on to first, and a one 6 three scoring play will retire Dave Winfield. Sharply hit, but Gaylord Perry knocked it down, and Todd Cruz at short had time to make the play, on to first. Almost uh, Julio Cruz cutting in front of Todd Cruz to take the play away from him, but he got out of the way in time, and Todd Cruz throws him out. Winfield lost a step coming out of the batter's box for some reason, and they still got him. Here's Oscar Gamble now, the designated hitter who flied out his first time up. You know, we had mentioned a little bit earlier about the fact that tonight is the night for Gaylord Perry, uh, if it is to be, for him to win his 300th game. He has 299 career victories. Here's a strike, a breaking pitch across. But he now has uh, 3,366 career strikeouts, and it puts him only 142 away from becoming the all-time strikeout leader for Major League Baseball, the record held by Walter Johnson of 3,508. Here's a little loop into the shallow left center on his box tee. He's there. Got it for the out. The inning is over. The Yankees are down. One, two, three in the fourth inning. Gaylord's first. Perfect inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Somebody laughed through three and a half. The Mariners are leading the Yankees here. Five to nothing. Investing can be risky and taxes really eat into your income, but not with the Albany Savings Bank All Saver Certificate. It's a guaranteed investment. With as little as $500, you not only earn high interest, you keep more of your income, since your first $2,000 of interest is tax-free if you file a joint return. This is E.G. Marshall. Visit any Albany Savings Bank office for full details on the All Saver Certificate. Tax-free income from Albany Savings Bank, the Savings People Bank. Committed to you, member FDIC. A reminder, there is a substantial penalty for early withdrawal. 
takes time to tell you the answer to the Borden Sports Quiz number one and announce our winner. But first, let's review the quiz. It's the bottom of the night. Home team is trailing by a run. They have runners at the corners, first and third. The opposing pitcher gets the side, starts his windup. He notices the runner on first has a long lead. He whips a throw to first. The umpire calls the runner out. Ending the game is a loss for the home team. But wait, the home plate umpire overrules the call. Waves the runner on third into home, tying up the game. The manager and umpire are joined. The question, why did the home plate umpire overrule the play, thus allowing the runner on third to score? The answer, when the pitcher threw to first base, he had already wound up his pitch. Under the rules, the pitcher committed a bulk. Therefore, the pickoff at first was negated, and all runners advanced one base. That sent the scoring run home from third. Congratulations to Frank Rader of Schenectady. He'll receive a pair of tickets to see the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. We'll have a new quiz on May 7th. Remember, with Bordens, you're always a winner. Gameloy Perry's 299 wins. He has another record. I'm sure a lot of pitchers would like to have. It's going to sound strange. He's lost 241. I know a lot of pitchers like to have been around the major leagues long enough to <laughs> have that many decisions, even though they might be on the lost side. Rudy May is the new Yankee pitcher, as we surmise. Doyle Alexander giving up five runs on five hits in the third is through for the night, and Rudy May will be pitching to Jim Mailer. John? All right, it was Mailer who started that big inning for the Mariners with a booming triple to deep left center his first time up, snapping it over 18 slump. For uh, Rudy May, his sixth appearance, and uh, no record, 12 and two-thirds innings, 11 hits, and uh, he has made one start, no saves. Foul back it out of play, a ball and a strike to count to Mailer. Right-handed hitter, big, tall, strong youngster who is uh, trying to make it here in the major leagues with the Seattle ball club. Here's a pitch that's a strike in the outside corner, and it's one and two. Sports picker updates us on the Baltimore-California game, two to two now at the end of three and a half. And a footnote on Palmer will give you after this pitch. All right, here it is, and it is just wide. The fastball misses, two to the count. Jim Palmer left the game in the first inning with a sore neck. And uh, now they have corrected the relief pitcher was Russ Grimsley, who replaced Palmer and not Tippy Martinez, as the ticker had reported earlier. 2-2 Two -two delivery, swing and a miss, strike three. Mailer is down. Rudy May opens uh, his relief stint here with a strikeout. And the batter is going to be Terry Bulling, the catcher. Alexander, by the way, three innings pitching, six hits, five runs, but only two are earned. And he didn't walk anybody, and he struck out two. You know, Rudy May, even though he had a rough inning, his last inning he pitched in his last game, that was against Oakland in the 13-inning ball game. he had retired at one stretch 19 hitters in a row over three appearances. Down low and inside, and it's one ball to no strikes. I was chatting with Stan Williams today and asking Stan about what he felt the uh, makings of the pitching staff would be in the you know next couple of weeks. He said, I wouldn't see any real different changes at all, outside and low, a ball and 2-0. Oh. He said, except for the fact that we probably should have six starters with Rudy May as our, our sixth starter, or he could fill in as one of the five starters, but there just isn't any room for him to be a starting pitcher, so he'll be used in long relief, sometimes short relief. One hopper to Bucky Dennis short, and on to first, bowling retired. Two down in the inning, and the batter is going to be the uh, leadoff hitter in the order for the Seattle Mariners, Julio Cruz. It really started against Detroit. He retired the last 10. Then he pitched in uh, relief against Oakland and retired the side in order for 13 in a row. And then he retired the side in order his first two innings night before last, giving him 19 straight over the stretch of the three games. Then his third inning against Oakland, they got to him for three runs. Here's a swing and a foul back and out of play. No balls in one strike to count to Julio Cruz, who has a, a sacrifice and a ground out and is 0 for 1 in the game. He reached on the sacrifice, another foul back it out of play. When Rick Cerrone's throwing error allowed him to first and to second, and then he came on to score. Rick just took too long a look at second base, wondering whether he might get Bulling, who was running between first and second. By the time he threw the first, he was just too late. Hit Cruz with a throw. All right, here's the two-strike delivery. Curve is inside, and it's one and two, the count. Well, the Mariners have uh, won seven and lost three here at home at the Kingdom. Well, the Yankees would sure go for a winning percentage at Yankee Stadium uh, like the Mariners have been able to total in their first 10 home games. 
Here's the 1-2 delivery, bounding ball foul and out of play, and it's still a ball to two strikes. The Yankees just finished that 12-game homestand, and they won only four while losing eight. And their overall record at home is four wins and ten losses. One ball, two strikes. The Yankees are five and three on the road. Swinging a foul on the curve, and it's back behind home plate again, and it is still a ball to two strikes. Mariners lead it five to nothing. They got five runs off of Doyle Alexander in the bottom of the third inning. And they did it with five hits. Here's the line of the one-two delivery. Bounding ball on the right side. Willie Randolph charging. And on to first to retire Julio Cruz and the Mariners in the fourth inning. That's a one-two-three inning for Rudy May. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. And now through four full, the Mariners lead the Yankees five to nothing. I've had enough. Come on, Bob. There's nothing like a good run first thing in the morning. We've already gone two miles. The best part's just half a mile away. My feet. Fresh scrambled eggs. Breakfast. Sizzling sausage. Mm. And golden hash brown. Hash brown. Over an egg McMuffin. McDonald's. Start your morning run. With the dawn of the sun. Smell the cooking in the air. You know McDonald's is waiting there. That was great. Let's do this every day. Run every day. You so get up this morning and get away. You said run. I'll bring the car and meet you here. To McDonald's. Bush, our brewmasters face this challenge. Brew a light beer with a clean, distinctive taste. One made from the best ingredients and beechwood aging. Budweiser Light lives up to the challenge. Bring out your best Budweiser Light. Bring out your best Budweiser Light. The best never comes easy. That's why there's nothing else like it. Budweiser Light. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Gaylord Perry, 43 years old. You know, he only won 74 games in the Major Leagues before his 30th birthday. He's won 225 since turning 30 years old. Only two others have won, uh, what, more than 200 past 30? Uh, Cy Young and uh, Warren Spahn. Well, he knows right now that he's on the verge of a history-making night here at the Kingdome in Seattle with a big 5 to nothing lead. And the Yankees will try to see what they can do about getting back into this one. And the leadoff batter is going to be Roy Smalley. Swings and misses on the first Gaylord Perry offering, and it's no balls in one strike. Roy has a hit. He singled into right his first time up. The Yankees have three hits from the game, and they threatened in the uh, third inning but failed to score off of Perry. Inside a ball and one ball and one strike. Cy Young won 318 games after his 30th birthday, and he retired at the age of 44. Warren Spahn, who also retired at 44, won 277 games after his 30th birthday. One ball, one strike to count into the line, and here's the pitch. Foul to the right, past Mike Ferraro at the uh, first base coaching box, and it'll be a 1-2 count still to Roy Smalling. Mariners 5, Yankees nothing. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. As Seattle scored five runs off of Doyle Alexander in the bottom of the third. Had five hits in the inning. They were helped along by an air charged to uh, catcher Rick Cerrone. Mailer had a triple in the inning. Cowens had a triple in the inning. And the pitch. Swing and a high fly in the shallow center. Here comes uh, center fielder Simpson on. He's there. Makes a catch for the out. And there's one down. Smalley is retired. And here's Rick Cerrone. Must be something about the water. Or maybe it's the peanuts down there in eastern North Carolina. Gaylord and Jim Barry going on for so long. And, uh, Gaylord's uh, home, Williamson, North Carolina, is not very far from Hertford, where Catfish Hunter has his farm still lives. Long way from Asheville, though. About 450 miles. Whole length of the state. I was going to say, it's all the way on the other side, isn't it? Yeah. All right, here is uh, Cerrone. bounced out to the pitcher first time up, and he takes the pitch high. One ball and no strikes. Now, Gaylord's wife is here tonight. 
along with their 19-year-old daughter Amy, but two other daughters are at home in Williamston, along with the Gaylord's parents who are home in Williamston. The game is on national cable tonight on the USA Network. I don't know if the uh, Perrys have an opportunity of watching the game. Here's a foul ball behind old play, picked up quickly by catcher Bulling. He thought he had it in fair territory, but it is a one ball, one strike count to Rick Cerrone. I believe it's prom weekend for two of Gaylord's daughters, and his son is playing ball over the weekend. It couldn't be here. Gaylord got a call from the president yesterday. They had a press conference here in Seattle. One ancient mariner calling another, huh? Yeah, that's what the uh, conversation was about, mostly. All right, here's Perry now in a 1-1 offering to Rick Cerrone on the pitch. It's a strike on the outside corner and one and two. I believe Gaylord Perry uh, worked in uh, one of uh, Mr. Reagan's campaigns for governor of California. That was when Gaylord was out pitching for the uh, San Francisco Giants. Perry had a pretty good line for him yesterday when the phone rang. Here's the line now in the 1-2 delivery. Swing and a missed strike three. Struck him out. Cerrone goes down. Third strikeout for Gaylord Perry, and a batter now is going to be Bucky Dent. Phone rang, Gaylord answered it, said hello, and the president said, who is this? And uh, he said, this is Gaylord. The president said, hey, Gaylord, how you doing? He didn't even have to tell him his last name. Of course, I think the president knew who he was calling anyway. <laughs> Pretty much set up. And I uh, understand the president spent a little extra money on the phone call. He didn't uh, limit it to the normal three minutes he got on long distance. They spoke three minutes and 35 seconds. After it was over with, Gaylord had some jelly beans, and he offered one to his uh, brother who was in attendance. Here's a strike to Bucky Dent. No balls in one strike. His brother's here at Matt. I believe I heard you mention that earlier. I talked to Jim for a few minutes before the ball game. He looks good. He's a... Uh, Pitching instructor for the Oakland A's. I was going to say, when you say he looks good, he looks like he could go out there and challenge his brother right now. <laughs> Outside and low, and it's uh, two balls and one, one ball and one strike now to count to Bucky Dent. Jim looks like he's in better shape than Jim. <laughs> That's what you're saying, and you're right. <laughs> one thing about Gaylord, he looks his age, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. One and one to count to Bucky Dent, and here is the offering, Perry to Dent, and a high fly to left field. This will be an easy play for Bakhti. He's calling everybody off. He's got it. Since that double play ball in the third inning, the Yankees have now seen seven batters go down for eight outs. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Now through four and a half, Gaylord Perry in quest of win number 300, and Seattle leading the Yankees five to nothing. The revolutionary Monroe Radiomatic Shock is the best riding shock absorber America has ever made. Radiomatic is the first shock to combine five proven ride control features in a single shock. Right now, buy three, get one free. No matter what you're driving, you'll ride better on Radiomatic Shocks. They're available now at Andy Woods Auto Parts, Route 9 Latham, Sand Creek Road, Colony, and Catlin Street, Schenectady. Offer expires May 31st, 1982. Remember, America rides Monroe. Our guest today is J.F. Woolard, the man who proved you can advertise anything on radio. That's right. What a product, Mr. Woolard. A bird wash. Give me a bird bath. No, I mean a bird wash. You put your bird on top of your automobile and drive them through. Uh, you get soap, scrub, rinsed, hot waxed, and hand dried 50 cents. Yeah. Question. Why do I use radio? No. Because it's economic. I went through Which one. means we can broadcast a lot more messages to a lot more folks more often. Do the birds actually do that? No, the announcers do that. I mean, do they sit on top of the car? Well, you know? sometimes they fall off and gum up the oh, whole works. Boy. But that's why we use radio. Excuse me. We rush right on the air and say, we'll be closed today. A bird fell off. I call that amazing. We call it radio flexibility. Means we don't have the expense and delay of changing a whole newspaper ad. Is your bird wash a success? You bet your sap sucker. And it proves radio is the way to reach people because it led to another good idea. A car wash. No bird tubs. No. Heat them, fill them with water, blow air into them, and let them soak. That's a hot tub. Ooh, there's another good idea. Radio. Red hot because it works. For more facts on radio, call this station of the Radio Advertising Bureau. They brought you this message. Share all the excitement of Yankee baseball. Stay with us. Radio 59. Now please put out Yankee, Yankee, Yankee of the Martin Brothers, Taylor, American Pride Sweepstakes. Ciola Cooper, George DiMartolo, and Kevin Dunbar, all of New York City, our congratulations. Hi, Manny Castillo is the leadoff hitter, and he lost a deep fly to left. Winfield back at the warning track and leaping up to make the catch. 
Castillo down on a pitch and went away. That's pretty close there, Frank Messer. Hey, the truth, Castillo hits that ball 360 feet to the wall and he is out. Last time up, he sent a dying quail over Bucky Dent's head. Got a base hit and run batted in. All right, here's Bakhti now, who is one for two. He doubled in the first inning, and then foul popped to uh, Roy Smalley his last time up. Well, it doesn't take a whole lot to get one out of this ballpark. Here's a strike in, no balls and one strike. 316 down uh, both the left and right field lines. Of course, there's that extended wall now at right field. They doubled the height of it from the 11 and a half feet to 23 feet. But no. still is close. No balls and one strike into the line is Rudy Mang, and here's the pitch. Bounce toward third, bobbled by Smalley. He might be able to make a play, and throws him out. Good play by Roy on the recovery as he bobbled it momentarily, and then recovered in time to throw out Bruce Bakke. Now Richie Ziss. You know, I'll tell you, Smalley is not the most graceful third baseman I've ever seen, but he's made some good plays down there, and that's the bottom line. He's knocked some balls down. He's got that good, strong arm. He had a strange motion on that one, knocking the ball down with a cross-body move. Recovered it, got the man out with that good throw. All right, Rudy May to Richie Zisk, and he's low for a ball, one ball to no strikes. Zisk tonight held hitless in two trips, climbed to center, he hit the ball well, Mumphrey made the catch of the first inning, and then he struck out, Alexander got him. Here's a curve for a strike on the inside corner, and one ball and one strike the count to Richie Zisk. Into the line, and here's the delivery. Swing and a high fly left center. This ball's really hit, and Mumphrey won't play it. Uh, it won't get it. He plays it off the wall. Actually, Winfield is going to play it off the wall, and Zisk is going to end up at second base with a stand-up double. Second time we've seen a ball hit the wall and bounce back over Mumphrey's head, and Winfield having to chase it down in center field. It's the first hit off of Rudy May. It's the seventh of the game for the Seattle Mariners, and the batter is going to be... Todd Cruz, the right-handed hitting shortstop. Hit a very big hit off of Doyle Alexander back in the third inning with two outs and two on, both in scoring position at second and third. Cruz hit an 0-2 pitch to right field, and it was a single that scored two to give the Mariners a 5-4 to nothing lead. Collins then drove across Cruz with a triple to make it 5 to nothing. That's the score at the moment. Strike and a curve to Todd Cruz. No balls in one strike. Managers and pitching coaches get very upset on uh, key base hits off 0 and 2 counts. No balls, one strike here at the set by the left-hander Rudy May as he looks to the runner at second and the delivery. Check swing, he went around on it. Low pitch and it is no balls and two strikes to count to Todd Cruz. O2 the count, Cruz batting. Now the set again is May, looks to the runner, Zisk at second, he just doubled off the left center field wall, and the pitch, down low, and it's one and two. Well, you know, Frank, there are Yankees fans everywhere, all over America, and I guess uh, there are many that are here tonight, trying to root the Yankees from a comeback uh, story here. I saw some fans in the parking lot before the game from Nevada, who well, come up to the game. Great. Here's the two-strike delivery, swing and a miss, strike three. And Rudy May gets his second strike out of the relief stint and retires the Mariners here in the fifth inning. No runs a hit, no errors, one lap through five. Seattle five and New York nothing. Of all the ways that we can fly, of all the highways to the sky, of all the wings that greet the sun, Easter. third year in a row now, more passengers have flown Eastern than any other airline in the free world. If you helped make us America's favorite way to fly, we thank you. If you haven't flown Eastern recently, give us a try. We'll show you we really do earn our wings every day. about their fancy ingredients, special 
barley from here, exotic hops from there. Uh, funny thing is, they've been making Michelob like that for years. They just don't talk about it. Don't have to. Oh, you can use the label if you're really interested. It says right here, every ingredient used is the finest obtainable. Makes sense. Otherwise, how can Michelob be so good? I suspect the people who brew Michelob figure beer drinkers know a good thing when they taste it. And I appreciate that, because I don't want to spend my weekend, or weeknights for that matter, pouring over long lists of ingredients. <laughs> I can spend that time pouring another Michelob. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, here's the uh, sixth inning now of the leadoff batter for the Yankees. Top of the order, Willie Randolph. First offering from the right-hander, Gaylord Barry. Outside of all, one ball and no strikes. And the slider is across, and it is one and one. Five nothing, Seattle leading. And the Yankees batting in the top half of the sixth inning. They've been out hit seven to three, and there are two errors on the board. One for the Mariners. That was charged to third baseman Manny Castillo. And one for the Yankees, charged to Rick Sorrell. Randolph is 0 for 2 in the game, and the pitch. Outside, a ball, and 2 and 1 now to count to Willie. He was out bouncing to the first baseman, Mailer, unassisted his first time up, and then reached in an air, charged to Castillo in the third inning. All the Mariners' runs came in the bottom of the third, and the five with nine men batting, giving them the lead at 5 to nothing. A pie, 3 and 1. So far in the game, Gaylord Perry hasn't walked anybody, and he has struck out three. Three balls and one strike to count, right-handed hitting Willie Randolph. Gaylord Perry to the line, and here's the delivery. It's a strike at the letters, and three and one. Three more with Seattle tomorrow night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. The Sunday night game will uh, start at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 10.05 actually. And the pitch. Bounding ball right out in front. Gaylord Perry quickly off the mound. He's got it. Fires the first. With a end up out. One down. And before Ken Griffey steps in, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the New York Yankees Baseball Network. Don't miss a second of the action. Keep tuned to Radio 59. W-R-O-W Albany. All right, here's Griffey, one for two. Ken had a single back in the third. He's the last man to reach safely for the Yankees. That's eight in a row that have been retired by Gaylord Perry now, and nine outs and those eight batters down. Yankees had a threat going in the third with no score in the game. Runners at first and third and one away, and Jerry Mumphrey banged to a 6-4-3 double play that ended the threat and the inning. High fly, foul, I believe. Yes, it is, down the right field line. That was out of here, but foul. Griffey comes back. Boy, he stroked that one. Wow. He really did. Griffey is looking for his first home run of the year and almost had it, but just foul. Well, it's not really that much of a poke to the uh, lower mezzanine here about it beyond that extended wall in right field. But if you get one up into that second deck or even into that third deck, you really hit it. And uh, Griffey's carried into the second deck and just missed the third deck. All right, here's the 0-1 delivery. Foul, this one is off to the left and out of play. And it is uh, no balls and two strikes. I think there have been a couple of balls that have been hit to uh, the third tier of the kingdom here at Seattle. Seems like Reggie Jackson hit one up there. One of those. There's one. also, a, there's only a second deck in left field. They don't have the third tier extended all the way around. The scoreboard is out in the left center field area. Uh, Doug Rader hit one to the second deck in left field. A pie and inside, and it's one ball and two strikes. I think they were saying Bruce Bakke hit one up into the third deck here at the Kingdom. One ball, two strikes to count. Gaylord Perry working to Ken Griffey. One away, nobody on. Yankees trailing five to nothing to the Mariners, and it's the top half of the sixth inning. Gaylord with a big lead here as he goes for that. There's uh, a fair ball. Griffey will have to run to first. Pulling had a little trouble picking it up, and then Griffey goes down and is retired in a 2-3 scoring play. Now, Gene Michaels coming out. Wait a minute. I think George Maloney might call it a foul ball. 
Let's see. Here's the appeal as Maloney is uh, coming up now to Ken Kaiser. Now, Kaiser is claiming that it was a fair ball, and Gene Michael, if it is a fair ball, is going to argue the call. Joel the Belly is also in. Mike Ferraro is in. Now, Maloney is uh, talking with Ken Kaiser at the moment. Looks like Griffey's going to get his uh, at bat, and it's going to be called a foul ball. Ken Kaiser. Uh, overruled by third base umpire George Maloney. Now Rene Lachman will come out and he'll get his two cents worth in. <laughs> now Kaiser is explaining to uh, Lachman, he said, hey, I thought it was a fair ball, but uh, I've been overruled by George Maloney. Bill Haller, who is the crew chief coming in, nice to see Bill working again. Uh, we hadn't seen him since the accident when he was banged into by Larry Herndon. That's right, and uh, Bill looks fine again. I didn't get a chance to talk to him before the game, but it's good to see him back. Now Latchman continues the argument now with plate umpire Ken Kaiser. Uh, Terry Bullock kind of kicked the ball around at home plate in the area there. Now Latchman continues his beef and uh, he does get the last word as he comes off the field and Griffey steps back into the batter's box again. Well, we have the benefit of a replay monitor here. You mentioned the game was uh, being uh, televised on a cable around the country. If Griffey had uh, run down first base, <laughs> there wouldn't have been uh, too much argument on the Yankees' part. I think he might have been able to beat him, but he stood there and looked at the ball himself. All right, Griffey swings and lofts a high fly to deep right field. It is gone. A home run for Ken Griffey. Well, that stirs the Seattle Kingdom crowd even more as Griffey gets second life and hits his first home run of the season and the 11th of the year for the Yankees. He stroked it to the right field seats. Hit number two in the game for Ken, and the Yankees are on the board here, trailing now by a score of five to one. Well, oh, Getty got her for Ken Griffey, and uh, when you say stroked it, exactly right. He turned loose the bat with his left hand, following through just one-handed, but a nice, sweet swing by Griffey, which just goes to show you don't have to crank up and leap off your feet to hit a home run. High here is Jerry Mumphrey. Mumphrey swings and bounds one to second. Julio Cruz is up and brings it on to first for the out two down in the inning. Jerry retired on a pitch. Mumphrey won for three in the game now. He tripled his first time up, then hit to that double play in the third. And here he's out on the ground ball, second to first. Julio Cruz to Jim Mailer. By the way, the home run by Ken Griffey stops the uh, string of retired in a row by Gaylord Perry at nine. Excuse me, eight with the nine outs. I hear John Mayberry. Now Griffey hit a foul ball home run. And then it looked like Perry was going to gain the advantage and get him on that little number out in front of home plate and the overruling. Bounding ball to first. Mailer's got it. He'll go to the base himself. And Mayberry is an easy out. The Yankees get a run back, but they still trail by four. One run, one hit. The homer by Ken Griffey. No errors, nobody left. Through five and a half innings of play at the Kingdom in Seattle. The Mariners five and the Yankees one. Bring up the good is when you bring up the fry. Offers bread and cakes naturally. Taste bakery good is when you bring up the fry. Offers goodness for your family. Cause the fry hopper family puts goodness into everything we make. So you'll bring up the best when you choose a family name. Gee, I don't know, Mary. Maybe he can't play the flute. <laughs> oh, hiya. McGruff, the crime dog here. You know, I love a parade, but so do most crooks, pickpockets, and purse snatchers. Mm, because in all the excitement, nobody pays any attention to their wallets, purses, watches, or jewelry. Gee, so when you're in a crowd, watch out for your valuables and help uh, oh, take a bite out of crime. A message from the Crime Prevention Coalition we have counsel. I'm Richard Hill, WROW Sports. For the full season of Yankee baseball, listen to WROW. And keep that radio tuned to 59 AM for my morning sports reports, all the major league scores, and the important local and national sports developments. Evenings at 5.05, my sports commentary. Then stay tuned for Bob Buck's sports report and Dr. Paul Donahue's report on sports medicine for the amateur athlete in our 6 PM news block. Each weekend afternoon, Don Chevrier has ABC Weekend Sports. For sports fans, WROW is all the radio you need. The game is played on 77 WABC.
All right, Al Collins stepping in now as the leadoff batter for the uh, Seattle Mariners in the bottom of the sixth. Rudy May, he was working in his third inning of relief. Came in for Doyle Alexander in the fourth inning. And his breaking pitch is down low for ball. One ball and no strikes. Five to one, Mariners lead it. And they've got to hit the Yankees seven to four. Down low and two balls and no strikes. Rudy May working to Collins, who has a triple and an RBI and two trips. He flied the left first time up wide and 3-0. Well, they're anticipating, of course, this uh, big win for the Seattle Mariners and the right-handed pitcher Gaylord Perry here tonight at the Kingdom in Seattle. Mariners a strike and 3-1. And balls one strike and here's the pitch high pop on the right side this may be playable for first baseman Mayberry he's over near the seats and he's got it right in front of the box seats so Collins is the opening out I understand Frank that they're they're going to give away hopefully in anticipation of the win uh, certificates to all those that are in attendance tonight also I was talking to one of the uh, marketing directors of the Mariners before the game and should Perry win it they have a uh, thousands of t-shirts downstairs and they have the uh, screen ready to go to where they're going to run off the uh, imprint on the t-shirts that I was in attendance for Gaylord Perry's 300th win and sell those after the ball game. So they're looking forward to a big night here at the uh, Kingdom. Well, that's going to hold the crowd here until the game's over anyway. That's right. <laughs> One ball, no strikes to count as uh, Simpson is the batter. Here's a bouncing ball hit towards second. Easy play for Randolph, and he brings it on to Mayberry at first for the second out of the Mariners' six. And here's Jim Mailer, who started that big rally for the Mariners in the third inning with a triple to left center. And he struck out against Rudy May in the fourth inning. One for two in the game. He scored one of the five Mariners' runs. In that third, the Mariners batted nine. RBI hits from Terry Bulling, Manny Castillo, Todd Cruz and Al Collins, and uh, Todd Cruz's hit was a two-run single. Foul to the right, now to play, no balls and one strike. Into the line now, and here's the 0-1 delivery. That's a strike, a fastball is across to Mailer, and it's 0-2. Well, Mailer sat out the uh, Tuesday game against the Orioles at Baltimore. Renee Latchman giving him a day's rest just to try to shake that slump that he's been in. Wide and one ball and two strikes. And he came off of that rest on Tuesday and the rest yesterday. Hit that first pitch offered by Doyle Alexander for that triple. Swinging a ground ball to short. Bucky Dent plays a big hop. On to first to retire Mailer and the Mariners go down in order in the sixth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left and now through six fall at Kingdom in Seattle. It's the Mariners 5 and the Yankees 1. Going, going, gone. Sold to the man in the blue suit in the fourth row for $15,000. Well, I was only flicking my dick. The privacy of the individual is gradually vanishing. Bureaucracy is growing. Computers know everything about us. And pretty soon, we'll need Big Brother's approval to flick our own dick. You know, spraying is one of the most efficient economical ways to paint. Now for those small paint jobs around the home, Red Devil offers a 100% polyurethane spray enamel that gives you a long-lasting diamond heart finish. Features a patented spray head that's the closest thing to a professional spray gun. You can get Red Devil 100% polyurethane spray finishes in a variety of decorator enamels, as well as stove and barbecue black, rust-proof primer, and super-fast drying lockers, and other special spray finishes. Available at all channel stores and your local Red Devil dealer. Well, we go to the seventh, and Gaylord now looking at that scoreboard up there and seeing nine outs. 
That's all he needs to record victory number 300, and the Yankees hopeful of getting back into this one. We'll start it with Dave Winfield in the top of the seventh inning, and here to tell you all about it, Frank Messer. All right, John Gordon, thank you very much, and here we go. The Yankees have only four hits off uh, Barry. The one run, a homer by Griffey. Bumphrey has triple, single by Smalley, and a single by Griffey. Barry now to Winfield. Dave is struck out and hit back off the pitcher's glove, fielded by the shortstop who threw him out. High fly ball out of the shallow left center field on the first pitch. Joe Simpson, the center fielder, is under it, makes the catch. One pitch there is one away, and we'll take a look at Oscar Gamble. Gamble is flied to center and flied to left tonight. Touches Bill the cap, back of the ear, back of the neck. Now looks down, gets a sign from Bulling. The wide, the pitch to Gamble. Strike one is called. Gamble takes his time between pitches. For the most part, big winning pitchers work quickly. Gaylord, a bit of an exception, I would say, Bill White. Yeah, he uh, takes a lot of time. Starts the windup, and now the one-strike pitch. A low fastball, it's one and one. I think he wants to make you think a while, Frank. He wants to make you think he's loading the ball up when he is. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while he will load it up and get a good sinker. Psychology, a big part of the game of baseball. He's ready. And one one to gamble. Get on the ground of the shortstop. Todd Cruz up to throw the first. In the dirt, but taken nicely by Mailer, and Gamble is out. Dave Mijos, one of the Mariner broadcasters, interviewed Jim Barry, Gaylord's older brother, before the game tonight. He went to Gaylord and he said, uh, what question should I ask your brother Jim? Gaylord said, ask him how come all those years he threw the spitball and got by with it and I got all the blame. <laughs> Roy Smalley, of all the opposition players, Smalley has hit more home runs here in the Kingdom than any other player. He has 11. More than Jackson, even? Yep, more than any visitor. And he hits a high foul that's going to be out of play in left field. One strike. One park. Maybe that's a park in Texas that uh, Jackson used to hit the ball well. Is Jack that the uh, Texas ballpark? Yeah, Jackson okay. has a record down there. One strike on Smalling. Roy is one for two. Switch hitter, batting left, pitch coming. He takes it down low, had the plate, but downstairs. Uh-oh, now Bill Aller, that ball really went down, and Bill Aller now is going to get into the act. The second base umpire comes in and inspects the baseball, rubs it up and gives it back to Perry. I think Bill just wants to let Perry know that he's back there and he's watching. Out of a ball on a strike, and Perry again goes through all the moves. Haller watching from out in right field now. The windup and the pitch. It's high. Reggie Jackson has hit nine home runs here in the Kingdom. Smalley 11, then Ogilvy, Ken Singleton, and Bobby Gritch have each hit 10. Jackson, Dave Reverend, Jim Rice, and Robin Young of each at nine coming into the season. Say Reverend? Yeah. Uh, he has a ballpark he likes. Yeah. Two balls and a strike now on Roy Smalley. Barry Wines, here's his pitch. Strike two is called. Two balls and two strikes. As we get later and later in this ball game, I feel sure the crowd will react more and more to every pitch thrown by Gaylord Perry. We're in the seventh. Two outs, nobody on. The Mariners lead 5-1. The wide and the pitch outside. Barry has done a pretty good job of keeping the pitches away from the hitters tonight. They have not been pulling him, with the exception of Griffey, who pulled the home run to right center, and also ripped a single to right. And Mumphrey, who tripled. 
to right center. Three and two pitch to Smalley. High and it's ball four. Smalley is on. That is the first walk given up by Perry in the ball game. He struck out three men. And the batter will be Rick Saron. If you're wondering about our broadcast partner, Phil Rosito, he is a bit under the weather. He is? I heard. And may be joining us tomorrow. Brian, is that right? He will. Why can't you be under the weather two straight nights? We don't do television until Saturday. That's right. We do. Tell Phil, you better stay under the weather. Sarone <laughs> <laughs> takes one inside. Ball one. Got a lot of umpires in the crowd now. They want everything called a strike. Perry, in his five previous starts this year, has two complete games. Missed by one out is 299th win over the Yankees in New York. Now the set. Here's the pitch. Foul ball will be coming back and out of play in the crowd. I think we're seeing something here, Frank. You know, a lot of people say with the free agency and with the, maybe with trading and the player has uh, no allegiance to a ball club and ball clubs are possibly losing identity. But here's Gaylord Perry signed, what, in March by these people? Yeah. Seattle, after a couple other clubs uh, didn't want him, released by Atlanta. And it seems that uh, they're really pulling for him. I think you pull for events, not for players. Seems like he's been here 20 years, the way these people are pulling for him. That's true. 1-1 one, one pitch. Hit his bat on a check swing and fouls off. They have not announced the crowd, or if they have, I did not hear the announcement. It hasn't gone up on the board yet. But they're going to be way over their average. Oh, yeah. They're only average about 11,000 yeah. here. And this thing might be around 33. Well, the crowd behind Gaylord Ferry as he has a count of one and two on Saron. Smalley at first, the set and the pitch. Popped up, playable on the right side. First baseman stumbles, recovers, and is under it for the catch. Jim Mailer stumbled over the bag going into foul territory, but he recovered and made the catch. No runs, no hits, a walk a man left at six and a half. Mariners five and the Yankees one. I need you, Marshall. Oh. Usually when I'm talking to you about Albany Savings Bank, it's about a specific financial service. But there are many other general advantages offered by Albany Savings Bank, such as extended banking hours at many of the offices to conform to customers' needs and the wide geographic range of offices for additional convenience. But perhaps most impressive, the 160-year-old tradition of courtesy and interest offered by every member of Albany Savings Bank, the Savings People Bank, committed to you. Terry Bud Bullying will lead off. He has singled and grounded out, scored a run and batted in a run. Right hand hitter, Rudy May on the mound for the Yankees. Larry Anderson, a right hander, is in the Seattle bullpen. Rudy's pitch, line, base center to left field, down toward the corner. Whitfield waits for it to come off the wall. And Bullying is on his way to second, throw to second base. He is seen the second run. is actually the number two catcher on this ball club behind Jim Essien. Essien, I am told, was disappointed that he was not named to catch Perry in this game, chance to be the catcher in the 300th win. But Bulling has caught Perry most of the time this year, and uh, Latchman, the manager, says they work so well together, he said that he hated for Essien not to do it, but he said that Bulling had caught Perry so well, that's why he named him. And uh, Bulling has responded with a couple of base hits. First pitch to Julio Cruz, fouled off to the right side, strike one. He's caught a four hitter so far. Yes, he has. Only one walk and three strikeouts. Bulling at second, nobody out. 5-1 Mariners. The set by Rudy May. The cornerman looked for the bat. He takes the bat away and a strike is called, 0-2. Cruz tonight is over two, reached on an error in the third inning following a sacrifice spot. Sorrell took a little too much time looking for the runner going to second base, who was bullying, and threw the ball away at first. 
May with the 0-2 pitch. Blow it in. Early Gus Wynn was 43 when he won his 300th game. May come. Blow and the foul tip. Just foul tipped it on a check swing. That was in uh, 1963. Early never won another game. I guess you win 300, that's enough. <laughs> well, don't tell Cy Young that. No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I don't converse with Cy anymore. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody does, except maybe one person. But what do you do? He won 511? Yeah, he was, uh, well, they named the award after him. He was the, I guess they figure the greatest ever. The set by May, the one-two pitch. High outside, off the mitt, and on the third base goes Bully. Sorrell got leather on it, but couldn't hold it. And we'll see how the official score will roll it. A wild pitch. That's a curveball, evidently the curveball sign, and Sorrell thought the ball would come to him, and Rudy let the curve go a little bit too soon. It stayed up, but did not break at all. And Sorrell tried to backhand the ball. You might call that a backup curveball. It didn't break like it should. It got past Sorrell. So a wild pitch puts the runner at third, and the Yankees have to pull the infield in now. For the count of two and two on Julio Cruz. The set by Rudy May. And the left hander's pitch. Low it inside. Three and two count. Cruz is a little better hitter for average left-handed than right-handed, the way he's batting right now against Rudy May. Rudy straightens up, comes to the belt. Here's the pitch. Hit in the air to right field. Pulling is tagged up. Griffey is under it. Makes the catcher come to throw toward the plate, and they hold him at third. Pulling holes on Cruz's fly ball, and we'll take 10 seconds for station identification. This is the New York Yankees Baseball Network. There's much more Yankee baseball action coming up from Radio 59. WROW Albany. Manny Castillo will step in. He is one for three with a run batted in and a run score. Right hand hitting third base. Right handed against left hand pitching. He is a switch hitter. Batting 250 right handed, 130 left handed. This game. Pulling a third infield and the pitch. A pitch out by and, uh, the runner was not coming. Chuck Cotier goes through the signs again down at third and chats with Pulling. The set by May, no suicide, and another pitch out. Two balls and no strikes. Well, what uh, Gene might be doing here, Frank, uh, he might throw four straight pitch outs, or at least uh, another one, because he's got a right-hander or a switch hitter batting right hand at Castillo, and he's got the left-hander Bakhti up next. So he does two things, uh, he, just in case they want to squeeze, they'll, they'll have the pitch out. He also gets around the right-handed batter. No squeeze, and the pitch is over for a call strike. The count now two and one. And again, Castillo steps out, looks down at Cotier, and Cotier goes over to the back to talk to Bulling. Infield in, the outfield spread with Mumphrey shallow in center. The Mariners lead 5-1. to one. We'll watch Bulling. He does not come. Pitch is hit in the air toward left field. It's deep. It is at the wall and it is off the wall over left field's head. Here comes Scott Bulling in the score. Castillo stops at second, draws a throw, throw gets away, but he's in there head first and no chance to get up and go further. Mayberry runs the loose baseball now. I think Dave might have misjudged that ball, Frank. He thought it was going out of here, and the ball, uh, he tried to judge a leap to get up against the wall, and the ball actually hit, I don't think, as far up on the wall as Winfield 
caught it by. In fact, it hit uh, pretty low. I think Dave simply misjudged the ball. And uh, Castillo gets a double and a run batted in. And the Mariners now lead 6 to 1. That is their ninth hit, their third uh, hit, and first run off Rudy May. Dave had gone back to the wall. I think he would have made the catch easily, but he wanted to get a good leap at the ball, and it really didn't, didn't hit that high off the wall in the field. Now left hand hitting Bakhti steps in with a runner at second. Infield back, and the pitch is outside. One ball and no strikes. Larry Anderson continues to throw down in the Seattle pad, a right-hander. May's pitch, swing and a miss. Renee Latchman, the Mariners manager, told me before the ball game it was strictly up to Gaylord. Whether he stayed in or came out, really under any circumstances. He said he expected Gaylord to tell him the truth. He asked him if he had occasion to take him out. He said he would ask him. Gaylord wanted to stay. He said he stays. He said, after all, how many times can a man go for his 300th win? <laughs> Here's the Only one. once. Uh, that's right. <laughs> one one fence. Checked his swing and checked it in time, says Maloney. Well, Anderson's thrown pretty hard down there. I don't know. Maybe Gaylord told Lachman that, uh, Lachman that uh, he might be a little tired. Two ball, one strike count. Rudy Reddy and Deals fouled it back off the hands. George Frazier also throwing in the Yankee bullpen. When Early Wynn won his uh, 300th game, he pitched only uh, five innings. Jerry Walker came in, pitched the last four. Jerry, did they give saves then? Jerry's here in the booth with us as uh, one of the Yankee personnel. Two ball, two strike pitch. On the way. Line to left, base hit. And Castillo is being brought home. The throw from Winfield, cut by Smalley. The, got the runner hung up between first and second. The run has scored, and Bakhti is tagged out by Mayberry. But Castillo's run counts, making it 7-1. to one. Bakhti gets a single, a run batted in, and he is out 7-5-3. Now seven to one, Mariners. A lot of familiar names in that uh, Cleveland uh, Kansas City game when Wynn got his 300. Tito Francona, the shortstop, was former Yankee shortstop and manager Dick Hauser for Cleveland. That I have the box score here in my hand. I don't remember it myself, but Richie Zip. Gets one in the air to right field, and Griffey is there for the catch. But the Mariners have added two runs on uh, three base hits. And at the end of seven, it's Seattle seven, the Yankees one. Hi, I'm Tom Seaver. You know, in 15 years in the big leagues, I've learned that all great teams have the same two qualities, consistency and professionalism. But winning teams don't just exist in sports. They can be found in everything we do. A real winner I admire for their excellence in professionalism is American Dynatel. As a leader in the private telephone industry, American Dynatel has saved businesses more than 30% on their monthly phone bills. Companies that buy or lease on an American Dynatel phone system can take advantage of a major league staff which custom designs each phone system and stands behind their work with service 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I've joined their team because although American Dynatel is a leader, they keep trying to be even better. That's why, season after season, American Dynatel is the winning team in business telephone systems. To find out more about American Dynatel, call Dave Martin at 800-962-5478. That's 800-962-5478. Gaylord Perry comes out to pitch. 
as we go to the eighth inning and he'll be working to Bobby Mercer batting for Bucky Nett. This has always been a classic confrontation over the years, Mercer and Perry. So then after popping up and flying out to left field is gone, Mercer will bat for it. Perry winds and the first pitch. Down low. One thing about it, there'll be more people if Perry wins his 300 tonight. More people see his 300 than saw Gus wins. They had 13,565 in Kansas City. But I bet you a million people have told Gus when they saw that win. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they have. Pitch coming, grounded to first base, and knocked down, picked up by Mailer. He goes to the back and get Mercer one out. Although early pitched only five innings. He got a key base hit. He let off uh, the fifth inning with a single before the inning was over. Cleveland had scored four runs, so he uh, started a four-run rally in a one-to-one -one ball game at that time. When was next one hitter? I believe he was a switch hitter. I know he, uh, I think he was a switch hitter. I used to watch uh, Wynn and Lemon, Keegan and all those guys, Rosen, all Cleveland uh, players. There's some other Yankee names in that box score. Jerry Lumpy was the Kansas City second baseman in that ball game. Charlie Lau was their catcher for Kansas City. Willie Randolph steps in, takes inside from Perry. Randolph tonight is 0 for 3. Routed out to first, reached on an error, and hit back to the box, and Perry threw him out. The wind up by Gaylord Perry at the pitch. Line foul down toward the right field corner and into the seats. After early win, one is 300th game. He made 15 more appearances for the Indians in 1963, but failed to post another triumph. Randolph with a count of one ball, one strike. The Mariners are leading 7-1. to one. The wind-up by Gaylord Perry and the right-handers pitch. Just a little bit low. Evidently, umpire Kaiser says it's a ball and again the paying umpires in the box seats and the bleachers disagree the wide the pitch coming a strike call at the letters and it's two and two Here comes the two and two pitch. Inside with a fastball, three and two to Randolph. One out, nobody on. We're in the top of the eighth inning. Perry winds it up and turns it loose. Randolph hits it right back off the pitching hand of Perry. Fielded by Todd Cruz, throw to first. Safe. Randolph is safe at first base. He may, Perry may not have touched that ball. I don't know. If he did, it just barely flicked his throwing hand. I think it just got his throwing hand, Frank, and slowed it down enough for Willie to make it. Cruz had to come in from second base. He was out behind Gaylord Perry. And Cruz got rid of the ball quickly. Very close play at first base. Very close. The first base umpire Jerry Newdecker gave the call to Willie Randolph. That is the Yankees' fifth hit of the game. And with a man on and one out, here's Ken Griffey, who has two of the five base hits, including his first 1982, and obviously his first Yankee home run. Griffey two for three with a homer and a single, grounded out his other trip. Perry checks Randolph with a look, the pitch to Griffey is outside, ball one. Third baseman Manny Castillo. Gets Gaylord's attention to tell him that Mailer wants to let him know he's going to play behind Randolph now at first base. Mailer's going to play the hitter and not the base runner. Barry sets and his pitch. 
A strike is called as he threw a breaking pitch that time to Griffey. One ball, one strike. There's one out. To a man, the Mariner players said before the game they were excited and thrilled and happy to be a part of what could be an historic event. Well, they don't have too much of an opportunity to be uh, excited about anything. That's very true. 1-1 one, one pitch, and Griffey bluffs the butt, and the strike is called. The play you want to try running butt that time for a base hit, and Kaiser calls it a strike. It's 1-2. and two. the shout of Gaylord in the background. One and two count on Griffey. Gaylord started up and stepped off. Broke the motion. Nice starts up. Comes set. The pitch coming. Hit through the left side. Base into the left field. Randolph will have to stop at second as Bakhti feels the ball and wings it back in. Griffey has his third hit of the game. I think Ken likes to hit on this surface. Although he has said in the past that it's not good for his knees, if he could uh, play offense on it, play defense on grass, he'd probably uh, be a lot more happy. Well, he's got himself his third hit of the night. And the batter will be Jerry Mumphrey. First game this year, Griffey's had three base hits in a ball game. Humphrey tripled his first time up, then grounded into a double play and grounded out to second. Takes a low fastball, ball one. In the first inning with two outs, Humphrey drilled one up the alley in right center and went to third. Mayberry popped up to end that uh, inning. Then with runners at first and third and one out in the third, Humphrey grounded into a double play started by the shortstop. The pitch, line, base hit on the left field. Randolph is held at third as again Bakhti gets the ball back in quickly and the Yankees have the bases loaded. Three consecutive singles and the Yankees have loaded the bases against Gaylord Perry here in the eighth inning. And once again the Mariner bullpen gets busy, a left-hander and a right-hander up and uh, they'll start throwing. Probably Vandenberg the left-hander and I guess might be Cottle the right-hander until we can verify right. Dave Duncan, the pitching coach, uh, now jogging out to the mound. He will give uh, Scottle and Vandenberg more time to get loose. Base is loaded one out, and John Mayberry's a batter. I don't think uh, the left-hander Vandenberg has uh, has had an opportunity to get loose enough to uh, pitch to Mayberry, so Mayberry is a sense to be in against Gaylord Perry. Boston over Texas 5-2. Twelve in a row for the uh, Texas Rangers on the off side. Milwaukee beat Minnesota six to three. Baltimore and California tied two two after seven and a half, and it's open three. Cleveland one at the end of six. Right? Mayberry with the bases loaded. Bill, he's zero for three tonight. Has not had the ball out of the infield. Full wind up by Perry in the pitch. Swing and a miss. Red line. You mentioned Dave Duncan, the pitching coach, going out. He used to be Gaylord's catcher in Cleveland. He caught Gaylord. Infield back, shaded around to the right side. The outfield deep and the pitch. Foul out of play on the left side. That'll be in the crowd. No ball, two strike count on Mayberry. Well, that was interesting to learn from Mayberry, and I know that you and John talked about it earlier, that his first ever Major League home run came off Gaylord Perry, and also his first American League home run came off Gaylord Perry. John said something else. He said 17 years ago, evidently, the Yankees drafted him. I didn't get any further into it with him, but he said, I should have been here 17 years ago. Hmm. No balls and two strikes on Mayberry. The pitch. Strikes. Ball. Ball on ball. That's a big strikeout for Perry. Second time he's got Mayberry. Perry is pretty cagey, Frank. They, they like to, to go to him the young pitchers on the Mariners. So he threw Mayberry a pitch outside. Mayberry uh, just got a piece of him followed off off the left side. 
Mayberry probably thinking he's going to go back out there and get a waste one. Came back on the inside corner with a good pitch, and John just walked away. They tell me the young pitchers on this staff, when Perry is not pitching a ball game, they fight for a seat next to him on the dugout bench to listen to him. They tell me he's been great with some of the kids on this club. Two outs, and he'll pitch to Winfield with the bases loaded. Again, the full windup and the pitch. Winfield bounces it off the plate. Perry's got to wait for it to come down. Barehanded, throw safe, and the run scores base hit. Perry played that one very well. He did not glove it. He took the high bounce, waited for it in his bare hand to try to save half a second. But his throw was not in time. Winfield has a single off the plate driving in Randolph, and it's now a 7-2 ball game, Seattle. And a grand slam here will put it uh, right back up uh, pretty close. The batter will be Oscar Gamble with the bases loaded. Barry takes a little time now. He's allowing the men in the bullpen extra time to get warm. Do you imagine all the media attention that Perry has had in addition to having to pitch a ball game? That takes a lot out of a man. He winds and the pitch. He throws a strike to Gamble. Grimmie at third, Mumphrey at second, Winfield at first. It was Winfield's 17th run by it in this year. No balls on a strike on Oscar Gamble. Oscar is 0 for 3. Here's the pitch. And it is hit sharply on the ground to the shortstop. Throw to second. Safe. Julio Cruz got there too late. As Winfield beat him to the bag. And it's now a 7-3 ball game as Grippy is in the score. Very odd lineup for uh, the Mariners. They had Cruz, the shortstop, almost out in shallow left center. And Cruz, uh, Julio Cruz, the second base, was playing deep and playing Randolph, uh, playing Gamble to pull. The game a foot race between Julio Cruz and uh, Dave Winfield, and Winfield beat him to second base. They're going to give uh, Gamble a base hit and a run batted in. And now Roy Smalley, and we told you Smalley leads all visiting players in homering in this ballpark. Home run here tied up. Base is loaded and the pitch is fouled back. Well, us strike one. Smalley tonight is one for two. He is single, fly to center, and drawn the only walk given up by Gaylord Perry. The tying run is at the plate. Now it's Mumphrey at third, Winfield at second, Gamble at first. Perry again, the full windup. The 0 1 pitch to Smalley. Popped up in a shallow left. In comes Bakhti, calling for it. Andre makes the catch. The Yankees score two and leave three. And in the middle of the eighth inning, it's Seattle 7, New York 3. I'm Bigger not... is better, especially when it comes to shocks for pickups and vans. And 4x4 Monroe Magnum 60 is as tough as they come. Almost twice as big as standard one inch shocks. Magnum 60 shocks help keep your truck and firm and stable on road or off. Right now, buy three, get one free. Monroe Magnum 60 is one big reason America rides Monroe. They're available at Andy Woods Auto Parts, Route 9, Latham, Sand Creek Road, Colony, and Catlin Street, Schenectady. Offer expires May 31st, 1982. Remember, America rides Monroe. Listen to the art of conversation at its very best. Listen to America Overnight, Monday through Saturday from midnight to 5.30 here on WROW. America Overnight, co-hosted by Ed Bush in Dallas and Eric Tracy in Los Angeles, takes a fresh look at the celebrities, the issues, and people just like yourself. It's the nation's premier talk and call-in show, America Overnight, Monday through Saturday from midnight to 5.30 here on Radio 59, WROW. Well, Billings, you've got three choices. Oh, sir, we can tar and feather you. I was just trying to save us money. You can go on the rack. All I did was suggest our company cut back on advertising. And every one of our competitors passed us. I was just trying to save us. Well, the best way to stretch the budget is to advertise on radio. It reaches more people and it targets the right audience. Oh, I know that now. What's the third torture? Sharing an office with an art director. Is that tar real hot? Radio. Red hot because it works. 
For more facts on radio, call this station of the Radio Advertising Bureau. They brought you this message. Bill, we have the paid attendance, 27,369 has just been announced. Doc Cruz will lead off the bottom half of the eighth. He's one for three. Big base hit. Drove in two runs in the third inning when the Mariners tagged Don Alexander for five. Rudy Mays pitch. Swing and a miss on a curveball. Strike one. In the ninth inning, the Yankees will have Cerrone. Milbourne due up. Milbourne not short. And then Randolph. Pitch is a bit high to Todd Cruz. Dent went out for the pitch hitting efforts of Bobby Mercer and Larry Milbourne is now at shortstop. One one pitch. Get on the ground, back up the middle, and that's going to be a base hit. On through to center field, and Todd Cruz leads off the bottom half of the eighth with his second base hit of the game. The fifth off May and the eleventh for the Mariners. Al Collins, a triple to show for three trips so far. The Mariners scored five runs on five hits in the third inning. Jim Mailer led off with a three-base hit. Todd Bulling had a single for the first RBI. The set by May and the pitch. Dagan for a strike. Julio Cruz sacrificed and reached when Cerrone threw the ball away. Castillo drove in a run with a base hit. And then Todd Cruz drove in two, and Collins got another one home with a triple. Strike call. 0-2 on Collins. Now the set by... Rudy May, and his pitch to Cowens is down low, ball and two strikes. I'd have to say Bill White making that decision and announcing it early. Latchman took some pressure off himself, saying he's going to leave it up to Perry. He said it's, it's his ball game. Now, if this were late September and the Mariners were fighting for a pennant, it'd be a different matter, I guess. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> A surprise a lot of people. Crowded down the third base line. Foul ball as Smalley gets to it. I think it'll be a while before we have to worry about a late September stretch drive here. Yeah. But uh, the point is, that I think Heisman yeah. did take pressure off himself by saying that. What else are you going to do? Well, he can't lose the game if you take him out, for one thing. Of course, uh, I guess he wants to pitch a complete game 300th win. Rudy's pitch, grounded back toward the box. May has it, throws to second, out at second base. They get Todd Cruz, no throw by Randolph back across. A 1-4 force play. And Joe Simpson will step in. Simpson is 0 for 3, has not had the ball off the infield, grounded out twice and popped up to Smalley. Left hand hitter. And the pitch to him. In the dirt, nice play by Cerrone. Ball one. Smalley is in shallow at third base, at the edge of what would be the infield grass on a normal playing field. And a throw to first, safe. Oh, almost got him on a second tag as Collins, getting back to the bag, lifted his foot for a second, but had it back down before Mayberry double tagged him. Now throw again over to first, and again, Collins gets back. you're joining us for the first time we can update you on this Steve Balboni is with the Yankees called up from Columbus Dave LaRoche sent it back down to resume his job as pitcher and coach strike call and the count goes one and one now on Joe Simpson Jim Mailer is the on deck batter the Mariners are leading 7-3 we're in the bottom half of the eighth inning 
Collins at first, one out. May set. And the pitch to Simpson. Runner going, fouled off. Fastball in on the hands. Collins was running with the pitch. down a side and the one two pitch line to Randolph who's got it and throws back to first to double off Collins no runs a base hit and with the double play nobody left at the end of eight the score the Mariners seven and the Yankees three of all the ways that we can fly of all the highways to the sky of all the wings that greet the sun passengers have flown Eastern than any other airline in the free world. If you help make us America's favorite way to fly, we thank you. If you haven't flown Eastern recently, give us a try. We'll show you we really do earn our wings every day. Identification on the New York Yankee Baseball Network. Keep your dial right here to Radio 59, WROW Albany, for much more Yankee baseball. We go to the ninth inning. Rick Saron to lead off. Larry Melbourne is on deck, and that's Willie Randolph. The Mariners are out in front, 7 to 3. Gaylord Berry. Into the windup, and the first pitch to Saron. Low and away, ball one. Saron tonight is 0 for 3, hit to the box, struck out and popped up. The Yankees have nine hits, getting five of the nine in the eighth inning, and scoring but two runs. The pitch, fouled off, one and one. The Yankees got two runs on five hits in the eighth, and of the five hits, three were on the infield. Lead off single by Randolph. Winfield fast one off the plate. And Gamble's base hit for the shortstop. Barry has the sign from Bully. The wind up and the pitch. Breaking ball, missing low. Two balls and one strike. Barry has walked one, struck out four. He goes to here, the back to back of the head. Benz has the sign, starts to wind. The 2 1 pitch. A fastball for a strike of the runners, and the count is 2 and 2. Sarone does not like the call. Has a word or two with plate umpire Ken Kaiser. Two balls and two strikes on Sarone, leading off the ninth. Mariners out in front, 7-3. The wind by Perry, the pitch. Check swing. Line drive back to the box. And Perry grabs it for the out. Top liner, Perry caught the ball just before it hit the ground, taking no chances on the way it would be called. He threw on the first base, but it was caught fair. A line out by Sarone. One down, and Larry Milborn will bat. Milborn, former Mariner, should get a pretty good reception from the crowd.
Brown's only thinking about Barry. No more. Switch it or batting left. And he steps away. The pitch is outside for a ball. Milborn is hitting 190. Batting uh, left-handed, he's hitting 286. And he lines one foul for the seats on the left side. One ball and one strike. Barry gets the last out himself. It will be his 291st complete game. It's his 633rd start. In his career, he has relieved 87 times. He winds, and the pitch. Pop foul off the left side. In pursuit, third baseman Castillo, and he will run out of room. The ball is three rows deep, just past the third base dugout. One ball, two strikes on no one. Barry had said that he knew it would benefit him if he could win his 300th game against the Yankees because of the added New York media coverage. He won his 299th in New York and is well on his way to his 300th now, leading 7-3. The pitch to Milborn popped up, right side. Julio Cruz, the second baseman, is under it and makes the catch. Gaylord Perry, one out away from putting his name indelibly in the record books of Major League Baseball as only the 15th pitcher in the history of the game to win the 300 Major League Baseball here. Sometimes the last out is the toughest one. We'll see. Rammed off the batter. Willie is one for four tonight. He's scored a run. Randolph has not had the ball off the infield against Perry. The windup, the first pitch to Randolph. A low fastball, it's ball one. And Kaiser will fall to the baseball. Randolph has bounced to first, reached on an error by Castillo. Hit back to the box and single. Back off Perry's pitching hand. Everybody is standing here at the Kingdom now. They will really break loose. The pitch. A uh, strike is called. It's one and one. A crowd of 27,369 riding now on every pitch. Two outs in the ninth. Seattle is leading 7-3. Gaylord Perry into the windup. The right arm around. The pitch to Randolph. High and tight. Willie ducks away. Two balls and a strike. Julio Cruz plays Randolph very deep on the right side. The third baseman, Castillo, is the only infielder in close. The outfield shaded toward right. Barry winds. And the two and one pitch. Get on the ground to Julio Cruz. He has it. The throw to first base. The ball game is over. And Gaylord Perry has become only the 15th pitcher in Major League history to win 300 baseball games. He is being pummeled by his teammates, the media racing on the field, television cameraman, still cameraman, reporters. The first man to shake his hand was the rookie first baseman, Jim Mailer. And Gaylord Perry, surrounded by teammates and media people, drops his cap to the crowd. Showing say more emotion right now than I've ever seen at this man's show. He blows a kiss to his wife, who is in the stands, and now, still surrounded by teammates of media, makes his way to the dugout and the ensuing press conferences to take place. So the Seattle Mariners win it by a score of 7-3 to three as Gaylord Perry goes the route winning his third game this year in his sixth start, a third complete game of the season, and the 
the 300th career victory for Gaylord Perry. I'll be back with more of the totals and the recap and more about the ball game right after this message. Mrs. Jones is 100 years old today. To celebrate, she's going to ask her pharmacist about generic drugs. Mr. Pharmacist, can you read this prescription? Yes, ma'am. It says to take your medicine four times a day. Not that. I mean the chicken track. That's the name of a brand name drug. That's what I thought. I want a generic drug instead. They do the same job, right? Yes, ma'am. They can cost less, right? Well, yes, ma'am, they can. So give me generic drugs, Sonny, and make it snappy. I got a birthday party to go to. Generic drugs. Get the facts from your pharmacist. A tip from the FTC. Here's hats off to the American worker, especially the millions of you who buy United States savings bonds with a payroll savings plan. You not only help your savings grow, you help your country grow too. Hats off, America, here's what's all about. out to take his curtain call as again he received a standing ovation. Nobody is leaving the king though. Well a few people now start toward the exit. A crowd of 27,369 on hand as baseball history was made in the King County Stadium tonight. More familiarly known as the King Dome. The totals on the ball game for the Seattle Mariners, seven runs on 11 hits. They committed one error and left three men on base. For the New York Yankees, three runs on nine hits. They committed one error and left seven men on base. Gaylord Perry, the winning pitcher, his third win of the year. He has lost twice. Doyle Alexander, who started for the Yankees, the loser. His record is 0-2. I'll be back with more on tonight's game in just a moment. season for action. What do you mean? There's tennis, running, biking, swimming, you name it, and I'm going to catch it all. How? Just make sure I have enough Coda Color 400 film. Coda Color 400 for prints and Ektachrome 400 for slides or Kodak's fastest 35 millimeter color films. When you're out to catch the action, no need to let all the thrill get by. Bring it all back down to drive in track. Kodak has a film that's quicker than Snakes, my sweat, and Coda Color 400 film for every kind of picture. Kodak has the right kind of film. Oh, yeah. How would you feel if you couldn't tune into this game because your car radio and tape player were ripped off? Or worse yet, you couldn't get to the ballpark because your car was stolen? It's hard to believe, but every 12 seconds in this country, another automobile is being stolen, stripped, or vandalized. Vertronics manufactures of the bug, America's number one burglar detection system for the home, through continued scientific achievement has created the auto bug. A very affordable alarm that stops the thief, and what is most important, before he gets into your car. That's right, the thief is struck out before he even gets to bat. Just let him tamper with your doors or locks to try to lift the hood of trunk, and the auto bug, with its sonic sensors, reacts immediately, causing your hazard lights to blink and flash in a frenzy, and then wham! The auto bug lets loose its own screaming, piercing siren. Holy cow, the thief is off and running. Do you think he's being chased by a Gossage fastball? So take it from the scooter, just like the speedy Yankee base runners. Keep your car and everything in it safe with the auto bug by Vertronics. Now available at many new car dealers. In winning the ball game tonight, 21 of the 27 outs against Barry were made on the infield. That included his four strikeouts and one double play in the game. 
Perry gave up a triple to Mumphrey in the first inning, a single to Smalley in the second. An error by Manny Castillo and a single by Ken Griffey put him in trouble in the third, but he got Mumphrey to ground into a double play. He got the side in order in the fourth and fifth. The Yankees scored in the sixth inning a one-out home run by Ken Griffey after a controversial call at home plate as to whether Griffey's check swing grounder was fair or foul. It was ruled a fair ball by plate umpire Ken Kaiser, and Griffey was thrown out at first. But then third base umpire Jim Maloney said no, the ball was foul. Griffey was given a new life, and he responded with his first 1982 home run. Barry walked Smalley in the seventh uh, inning. The Yankees scored two runs on five hits. Only three of the five hits, uh, three of the five hits, were on the infield in the eighth inning. And then Barry came back to finish it, getting the side in order in the ninth. Cerrone on a soft liner to the box. Millborn on a pop up to Julio Cruz and Randolph on a ground up to Julio Cruz. The Mariners scored five runs on five hits off Doyle Alexander in the third, and the game, as it turned out, was out of reach then. The Mariners added two more against Rudy May in the seventh. So Gaylord Perry becomes the 15th 300 winner in Major League history and the first since early when won his 300th game in 1963. The final score, the Seattle Mariners 7 and the New York Yankees 3.